Yo. Howdy. Hey, how are you doing? I am doing well. Sorry for the delay in calling you. Ah, you're good, man. Um, I have gotten a message from our mutual friend, Surus, uh, calling you a degen and saying that uh, his subathon is still going and that you are to come on at some point. That's my, my no, opening. No, I, believe I, I believe I made that promise. Um, <laughs> Cirrus is well aware of the fact that I take forever to respond to messages. Though, so I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm sure they've not taken this post. Yeah. Um, uh, he and I talked a little bit about this. He said that he mentioned to you, he was also interested in talking yeah, to you about the subject of the anti-theism thing. Um, so, you know, uh, but yeah, I, I guess, do we want to jump right into it? Or, so the or, question is now, yeah, hit here. it up. Hold on, sorry. The question is, try to pause this, but do I pit on this lap or this lap? I always thought I was supposed to enter the pit on this lap and then it goes up into here. But sometimes it seems like it wants me to pit here and then my deg starts here. My degradation curve. Is that what it wants me to Does it want me to pit here or here? Because I don't know. So, um, yeah, I don't even know. I don't know if I want to try it with Mick. Well, actually, I will try it with Mick. If I try with Magnus, I'll get fucked. Cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, hit a lap early. Yo, so I guess the first thing that I want to open with basically is getting a sense of your position with respect to anti theism. We haven't talked a whole lot about this. I've seen you talk to other people about it, but I wasn't, I'm not sure like what your stance is. Like if you're describing yourself as an anti theist, what does that mean? Um, I just don't like any kind of mysticism or superstition. Um, I'm, okay. uh, I, I don't. I don't think we can make any prescriptive statements on um, metaphysics uh, outside of the ones that are necessary for basic cognition. So, like um, the, the metaphysical belief in causality, you know, the reliability of our senses, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you have to make those leaps, otherwise, you literally can't participate in the world. You, 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 you would just have to die. If you right. It, we both agree solipsism is. Not necessarily the most helpful position, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, so yeah. to avoid that, I mean, to, you know, anything beyond that, right? You can make basic assumptions. But any any metaphysical oh, stuff outside of that, I, I completely reject. Because um, I think it leads people into really dangerous positions where okay. they're capable of making rational, utilitarian um, conclusions mm -hmm. based on information that I don't think is real. Uh, so, so, so I like, think example, what I'm supposed to do if a person believes in some kind of metaphysical pit this thing, lap. Like a spirit or like a deity you know with a given set of values or principles beliefs something about the world that so I'm pitting here testable, it's possible that they could arrive at a rational conclusion about the world that I would consider immoral based on information they have that I can't argue them out of you can't argue a person out of like a like a metaphysical belief unless you're willing to do that whole like here's a different interpretation of the bible type deal and that's not like a reliable process especially if a person's um not an adherent to a um like a major structured religion you know it could just be kind of a crapshoot on how much their positions can actually be moved okay um so is this a is this a position that you have like a policy position on like those their anti-theist policies that you would want to enact or is there like um or is this just like a rhetorical point that's no your... i'm i'm pro freedom of religion I, okay. I don't think it should be extended to any kind of state persecution so the, um, yeah, i guess but, uh, i mean it's like more of an ethical thing i guess okay so like i i guess my feeling on anti-theism is that if it's a position that in which enacting any policy relating to it would be like a violation of human rights. Why do you subscribe to the position? Like, because I get, I get kind of like where you're going with respect to. Um, I, I see your, I see like your position, but I'm wondering that. I guess, how do you get there? If there's no, if there's no policy position that you can get with it, then that without violating human rights, then why would you subscribe to that position rather than going some other route? Damn, Alonzo, like, what well, did you I get the fucking two seconds um, ago? I feel like, the same way about, like, gender abolitionism. I don't think you can policy your way over to that point. I think gotcha. You Am I out in front of Stroll? discourage some avenues. I don't think there's any practical or ethical way to like a... enforce anti-theism. Yeah, see, the what the hell is this? Um, I don't, I think, like, we... Like, so I just we moved have, my like, deg curve back. This in, like, the, um, I don't know. The Soviet <laughs> I have no fucking idea. China's bans. 
on okay, um, on religion, you know, right. like the state atheism type thing, but like it didn't really change anything. Functionally, it didn't change anything even for the people who deconverted because for those who didn't practice their religion in secret, a lot of them just started adopting mantras of the state with a religious um, fervor. So it, it ended up not really changing anything. It's like a long-term cultural project. So I guess if you're, if you're gonna have like that kind of, up, then I guess to, I, uh, this isn't necessarily where I was planning on going, but like, if you're gonna have that kind of behavior What's your goal with anti-theism then? Like, what's the end result that you're you're wanting to go for there? Like, Same as with gender it. abolitionism. It's just something that I care about ethically. I don't think that it's possible to like as they pitted, Ricardo vote pitted. in a guy who will make a big change or whatever. Okay. Um, I just it's like a, it's I like a guiding set of them. principles, right? Because there are lots of things that I think are bad that we shouldn't mm -hmm. do that I also don't think you can really legislate against. Like sure. a lot for, for like a lot of abusive behavior that you would do to a partner. The only Ricardo stuff gets out of the pits in front of me. Yeah, it's into, like potentially up. illegal. Like it goes into like physical abuse or financial crimes. You know, but mm -hmm. you can never make gaslighting illegal. That'd be insane. Can you imagine? Yeah, that? no, I, I feel that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So it's like yeah. you, you can't you can't meaningfully legislate on that. But obviously, like you know, culturally, we can still move towards the, the idea that you should treat your partner with respect. Go until you so uh, I guess let me get into my position then on anti-theism because I think that. I'm I'm in opposition to largely what you've expressed. I think that your position is a little bit more reasonable than what I've heard some people say. Uh, so I've encountered a number of different perspectives on anti-theism. One of which would be like the lowering the number of religious people yeah, in the world and elevating the number of atheists in the world, for example. Everyone here is um, and I think that that's that gets really into we have pretty much open air. dodgy territory. Are you? Is that does that describe where you're at, or is that not describe where you're at? I mean, through a cultural project, right? Through people making the choice to not be religious or the rejection of religious principles or any kind of spiritualism but yeah. not through any like state project I, I mean ideally i would want to live in a fully secular world yeah but it, i don't i don't even know if that's necessarily possible just i don't like either a, yeah like yeah. A, just like a, a, a mathematical sense and i think any attempt to do so through policy or force would be more destructive than whatever benefits you could possibly extract from it yeah All right, so i think that also the cultural enforcement issue okay so the clear thing here so a I think the way I did it is like technically wrong, but it's okay. But B, we also learned what what Vosh's position is on this. Oh, make sure you just got the fastest lap. Fuck. Funny. Yeah, we're trying to make him catch up to everyone in front of him as fast as he can, so that when they all pit, he can all pass them. Um. Oh, we can't really push on that, can we? Yeah, we can't. Allow that. Um, yeah, so we, f we found out Vosh's position, which is basically that he would want to live in a totally secular world and wants to get rid of any kind of quote-unquote religious aspects. And this is where the problem is going to arise, because not all religious aspects are, are, are going to be toxic, but they can lead to toxic things. And that's going to be the crux of the argument, I would assume, is that, is that just because it's a religious thing doesn't inherently mean it's going to be toxic or bad. Um, you could just do bad things with, with religious things, the same way you can do bad things with anything that's like religious um yeah she winds up being not just as bad it's like it's just a different form of the same problem um because you wind up just like shaming people arbitrarily i think that uh let me suggest like a different approach because i think that anti-theism stands in contrast to another social strategy of pluralism um and i I think that that's a better approach when it comes down to coalition building. I think that okay. when anti-theism is kind of like a scorched earth approach tires. and because when you're setting yourself up as an anti to something, it's going to result in like toxic behavior. And the question with that is going to be, is the toxicity that that kind of cultural narrative wow, me promotes, is that going to be, is that going to be hitting the kind of people that you want to hit with that yeah, toxicity? No so for example, if you're an anti-fascist, you're going to be hitting to fascist with toxicity what's bad about that fucking nothing so okay fine if you're uh with an anti with an anti-theist position though you do wind up hitting a bunch of theists with toxicity and if you're interested in coalition building that's going to be hitting a lot of people that are like on your side on most issues with everything except for like their religious belief so well, i agree that for coalition building it's always a better idea shit, hold on. to spread the net as far as possible mm-hmm but obviously there, there have to be considerations within that, right? Like, yeah. so I believe in coalition building with people, like lots of people with moral positions that I disagree with. 
I right. mean, I, I've gotten in trouble with the left for believing, like, should, like, edgy, libertarian-leaning kind of racist white dudes have yeah. an opportunity to... Oh, this is just funny to say, but okay. ...join the left on some issues? Like, yeah, absolutely, because better to have them on our side than not, you know? But I wouldn't, I wouldn't then think, like, well, we shouldn't exclude or criticize those ideas because it could be more effective to coalition build with them. Sure. Um, and, and I do think that, that, that spiritual thinking is harmful. I just think it's indirectly harmful. Okay. Um, it's not harmful for what it is. It's harmful for what it enables. So it, it, it doesn't necessarily... Because how often, when it comes to like coalition building, do you consider metaphysics, right? It's oh, a little... How are people not it's it's kind of a unique case. Um, how long are they going? The whole like, issue with religiosity. Um, and my, my goal isn't necessarily to like shame people, because you can't, you can't shame people out of religion. Um, I, I God, uh, maybe one in a thousand. I don't know. That's not... That's not reliable, um, but I, I, you know it's so c consider it like a non-pragmatic position to hold. But I still think it's important. Like you still have to keep your end goals in mind, right? Um, and that's so why, like, okay. Um, there you go, there I think that when you're talking about an end goal that is like back. entirely secular, that winds up being like a, effectively cultural genocide at that point, because you're looking at an end goal of eliminating indigenous practices uh several religions across the world various types um yes. ultimately right like that's it's a it winds up being like a colonial position uh i mean okay. there are plenty of other things that i want like culturally eradicated like um like um uh <clears throat> patriarchal tribal structures i think those okay. are pretty helpful. i mean if that means eventually the stigmatization of a bunch of indigenous cultures then yeah go for it um, yeah, there are plenty of cultures or cultural elements that I think... Most tires are weak, come on. And just spiritual belief is, is one of those for you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, on my position on that is when you're looking at... I, I'm a big fan of looking at uh, religion kind of like in a, in a rational way. And I think that somebody can be a theist and rational and an atheist and rational. And I think that that's exemplified by the number of people that are in philosophy of religion who are on both sides of this issue. And so when you're looking at like an end goal and saying spiritual beliefs bad, I think that in order to have that kind of thing, you need to, you need to show that like the spiritual belief is the reason why it's bad. And I, I don't think that's the case. I think that the cause usually when we're criticizing religion is in some other place other than mere God belief rather than, um, you know something else like somebody being an authoritarian and being religious as well and then utilizing that religion for authoritarian purposes for example well the issue is that if a person's bad behavior is rooted in some way in a spiritual or metaphysical justification there's literally nothing you can do to argue around it um it becomes completely impossible unless you want to adopt their own moon logic and just take a roll of the dice and hope that it their brain ends up like reconciling those new pieces of information in a way that's favorable to you um, but there's no real way around it. I mean, a big example of this right now would be the fact that um, a huge, like, a block with a ton of political power in this country is fundamentalist Christians. Right. And fundamentalist Christians often believe that the global warming isn't anthropogenic. It's caused by God as part of the end times that predicate the rapture. And the rapture is something they're looking forward to. They have been for a very long time. So they either don't care about or actively kind of root on climate change, something that would kill hundreds of millions of people, charitably um because it suits their metaphysical you know like this guy's still not pitting and there's nothing okay, i can not do pass to push them out of that outside of like pulling out a bible and hoping that i can like beat them to death with the right scripture like actually no not that not that but you can't yeah, really yeah, yeah. argue them out of it and that's very dangerous you know religion gives a supernatural pretext to existing justifications it allows people who's in front of me that's not before bot house with like an insane um, and make them rational through the addition yeah, of extra me, dude, factors that can pit. only be justified metaphysically. Stuff like that is really, really, really dangerous. And that, to me, is the underlying issue. There are smart religious people and rational religious people. Einstein was, you know, religious. You know, there's, there's a lot of that. But the religiosity is always itself irrational, much in the same way that intelligence is highly compartmentalized. My, you can have people who are very smart. Um, one, one second, my chat is like is freaking out at me and saying we, okay. we skipped introductions. Um, <laughs> so I'm both. Yeah, I, I uh, hear your point and I want to address them uh, and we might have to, to retread that ground a little bit. But um, I do want to let, I guess, all y'all know, I am pagan, I'm not a Christian. Um, so I'm a polytheist YouTuber that does, uh, you know, a lot of content around 
um, paganism and philosophy and that kind of stuff. So I'm here, and I make a lot of the same criticisms that you just made against certain forms of religion and and, uh, and even paganism. So but it's the logic, right? It's the um, it's the spiritualism underlying it all. Um, you know, e- even if you change the religion itself, the belief in any kind of spiritual or metaphysical like force that can't be empirically accounted for i mean then you could justify whatever believing in a soul for example is very dangerous if a person believes in a soul or reincarnation or afterlife or whatever their weight on death is going to be very different than what a secular person's weight on death is going to be that okay now here's going to be the crux okay while that might be true you can use it in positive or toxic ways so um if you so how how which side should I start this from? Well, I'll start it from the anti-theist side. So Vosh is going to say that like, oh, because you have an afterlife to look forward to, you're not going to be afraid to throw your life away for for something because you have an afterlife to go after. Like you have there's something else after life that you can look forward to. So you don't really have to worry about what's going on in this world. There's an afterlife. And on the on the on the theistic side of things, you could just as easily argue like, yeah, I'm going to make this w- life as worthwhile as possible so that I can have the best afterlife as possible. Because the good that I do here judges where I'll go in the afterlife. That's the, that's the two sides of the coin. Now, you can use, and then the toxic version of both of these is that for like an anti-theist theist argument, you'd say, yeah, uh, um, what people judge as good things that will leave them to a better afterlife might be like suicide bombing, like um, like Islamic extremists do, or uh, or you know, torturing gay people and blah blah whatever like, <laughs> whatever shit that Bosch will say. Like these are all toxic things that that nobody here has to worry about because they'll have an afterlife that they don't care how much pain they might cause other people because once they get to the afterlife it'll all be okay. They did what they they did what they thought they had to do, and they won't be judged by that. Really. But then the, 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 the toxic side on, like, the theistic thing is, like, for what Ocean will probably say is, okay, yeah, but if you're a, if you're, if you're atheist, um, or anti-theist, or however you want to describe yourself, right, and you don't think there's any afterlife, then why do you care about anything you do in this current life? You could all just throw it away because none of it matters at the end. You can be as, as bad and toxic as you want because none of it matters. We're, this life is, is fleeting and you've only got one of it. So anything I do in this world doesn't matter once I'm dead. Right? That's the two sides of the coin here. That's like a that's a moral uh, calculation that just gets totally fucked up by the introduction of a lot of, you know, um, mystical shit. So, okay. Um, as far as soul belief... Wait, what are you saying is the problematic part of soul belief? Well, it, it necessarily cheapens death. It okay. has to, because it, now it means no, it doesn't you, have to it's not an end to everything. If you believe in reincarnation, you might think killing an unfortunate person might actually be morally right, because you're sparing them that life and sending them to a to another one. Yeah, I, I see, this is the thing. But on the flip side of that, you you might think that you're you're sparing them and sending them off to a better life in the afterlife, but if you're a, if you're an anti-theist or an atheist or whatever, you might also think the toxic way of thinking about this is that you might think, oh, their life here is suffering, and there's nothing suffering about the end of life. There's nothing there. There's nothing to suffer. It's over. Everything's over. I'm freeing you from this pain. Okay. So, I've got a couple of distractions going on. I guess, uh, as far as, like, the soul is concerned, I'm... Heathen, I hold that uh, the soul is in multiple parts and that as one dies, that breaks apart and it can be considered the end. Uh, I'm not necessarily against the idea of like reincarnation or any of that kind of shit. And, but at the same time, I don't see that as necessarily like a harmful belief. One of the, the things that I got into with respect to history on the belief of the soul and afterlife and that kind of shit I, I'm agnostic on the afterlife. I don't think that you can reasonably... It, afterlife is different than even God belief, in my opinion. I think that you, there's less of a case for afterlife than there is a, of a case for uh, deities. But at the same time, I think that I don't have an issue with traditionally holding to an afterlife view of some sort. But it's, that it's being said... Right? Like, you could well, be, like, no, really I don't, dangerous if you're I don't think that it's dangerous inherently. I think that you can wind up creating a dangerous narratives around it, though. And I think that that's true with a lot of things. 
And I think that if you start saying that you're against everything that in order to have that, if you're against everything that can have dangerous narratives around it, you're going to be banning a hell or not banning, but you're going to be trying to be culturally against a hell of a lot more than religion. Politics, for example, politics and is something you can build tons of dangerous narratives around. You can build dangerous narratives around the form organization of government. Well, wait, that isn't, there, the, you know. the difference isn't just can it be used for bad? Mm -hmm. It's can it produce in a person a conclusion that can't be argued against? Yes. So politics? Political... Hell yeah. Well, no, no, because as long as a person is basing all their judgments off of empirics and your axioms are aligned, um, you can you can reason people out of arguments theoretically. But if a person believes there's a god and believes that god is telling them to kill, there's no moral argument you can make against that person. There's no benefit. I to I disagree with that. In the so, spiritual, there's not like a, a thing you get that you don't get through rational or empirical thought, but you do gain the ability to obfuscate real empirical moral judgments mm -hmm. um, with spiritual factors. So, uh, historically, we do have some kind of like gates that are built up around that kind of subject. And uh, there's a couple of historical thinkers that I want to kind of toss your way with respect to this conversation. And I think that. This is where I get anti-theism doesn't necessarily work as much as a pluralist approach. That if you're going to be criticizing religion and taking a pluralist standard, you're going to be able to criticize those things in a way that is going to appeal to people that maybe even are uh, ignoring empiricism in some way, which I'd argue that most people do anyway. I think that if you're outside of religion, there's a lot of people that will say that they are, are into empiricism, but generally aren't. Most That's people, fair. a lot of people don't think rationally generally. I've, I've, I, that's my opinion. Um, and I think that irrational or irrational narratives can appeal to people who aren't religious or are religious. It's The religion part doesn't necessarily predict one way or the other. It, uh, but if you hold a pluralist narrative and say, instead of an anti-theist narrative, then you're going to be able to start building standards with respect to how we engage with other people. Somebody saying that you know their God wants to kill, other, wants them to kill other people, is going to be anti-pluralist. So if we're thinking with a, a pluralist approach, then that person can easily be uh, ethically argued out if they're in a society on, that's, that strengthens pluralism. Uh, so pluralism um, is a set of here. I'm going to send these to you on Discord. I've got there's this. Uh, familiar with the concept the problem is that you're you're building a nice 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 rotting foundation like you can arbitrarily develop a set of moral beliefs that align mm -hmm. with you're mine welcome. through religiosity but i don't really value those beliefs that you've arrived at because they're they're built on on shaky ground okay Depending so the things that i want to send you about pluralism are, are constructed by an atheist activist that's fine i'll still disagree with them why um, they're holding it without any it's an ethical system i think I that the, the criticisms it. that you're putting forward on the criticisms you're putting putting forward against religion are ethical right no, the, so, no the problem they're not they're not ethical it's not that religious people are necessarily less ethical it's the system they've opened themselves up to non-empirical information they, they trust things based on faith as soon as you start doing that you introduce factors into ethical decision making that can't be accounted for and can't be reasoned against um there's no there's no like backbone to it. I think a lot of people are irrational, even secular people. I recognize that. Yeah. But there are ways to address that through education. You can't counter with religiosity education because even okay. if a person is highly educated, a religious belief that aligns them with different Jones, sets oh. of axioms, or Go. God forbid, if they're one of those types who thinks that anything God does is necessarily ethical. Um, yeah, I think that that's a, that's, this is a problem that uh, will show up where I'll agree with you with respect to criticism of religion in this regard, but I think that it's something that it shows up with respect to specific religions that have supremacy narratives. But it's fine even if they don't. It's still a problem. I, I see this the inside. Is oh my god, a what a beautiful that doesn't move. have a supremacy narrative. A lot of the things that you're talking about wind up going by the wayside. What, that what, things that just don't on, show up. Do I was, I'm a for my particular manifestation of religion. Right, I this is not. So I don't engage in a supremacy narrative. You can be an atheist, that's fine. I can be heathen, that's fine. That's not necessarily an issue. That contradicts empirical reality. What additional? Uh, what? What? As far what as like contradicting it, no. I'm. I'm. I think that empiricism is a useful tool for uh, engaging with reality. Just like I think that there are other useful tools for engaging with reality. If and we're looking at history, happen? like for example, if you're looking at history, you're going to be engaging with history and different assumptions that aren't necessarily empirical in order to build a narrative with information. 
the difference it, is the difference is that those are analytical methods that are meant to provide right. a understanding of something empirical whereas religion superstition adds just like there's there's no there's it's not analysis to believe there are like spirits or fairies or whatever that's just right. an I extra think that, thing that a person believes and i'm against superstition but i'm against superstition in a way that the romans and greeks have criticized it not with respect to just say, labeling all religious beliefs as superstition well, then what do you believe that I would disagree with, assuming that I'm a fully, uh, uh, you know... Um, well, I mean, I believe the gods exist, so I mean, we probably disagree on that. Is that a dear um, but well, I'm holding go. that the gods you exist. Said, but you just said you were against the superstition. Is that not... Right, like and that's why I'm saying that I'm against the superstition with respect to how the Romans and the Greeks criticized it, not with respect to labeling all of religion as superstition. So when Plutarch... Uh, there's there's Roman, Roman and Greek writer, Theophrastus and Plutarch. Theophrastus talk, uh, had a... Uh, text called characters where he goes through right, sorry just to pause on this and just give a little you know, like so far this guy this ocean guy is kind of doing really well um vosh is kind of just stuck on a on a all religion is uh superstition or whatever. like it, like none of it is real at all like nothing about it is real or anything so none of it can be applied to the real world and because of that um anyone can kind of apply anything to it and that's like the dangerous part about it but that's true about anything um, you can apply toxic or, you know, non-toxic things to anything in the world. What? Are you serious? The bot test doesn't even have DRS. Okay, I'm going to try one more time, and then we have to give up on this. Go with push. Or something. Um, yeah, like, the, you, you can just do that about anything. It's just, Vosh is just currently fixated on religion in any form. Um, when like someone like this guy doesn't seem to be very spiritual well maybe, no, maybe he's maybe I have the terms mixed up he's very spiritual but he's not evangelical where you know he doesn't think that there's like he might think that there's a higher power outside of our existence but like anything in, in our existence isn't like directly um affected by like a physical god manifestation in the world through a series of basically morally um bad people uh, and just describes like these negative characteristics and one of them was the superstitious man and the superstitious man describes somebody who is absolutely debilitated by trying to uh, adhere to every single religious custom that is part of his society such that it, it uh, negatively impacted his life to the extent that he wasn't able to live and uh, describes this as like a moral flaw basically so when you have somebody that is believing Come in religion on, in seriously? such a way uh, that they're taking it to this sort of like extremity uh, that's just too fast and uh just too fast impacting their own life in a negative way like that that's where um you can Obviously, criticize it as superstition my threshold is, is well beyond that sure point. and you so know, i don't even like horoscopes i mean i consider right people who believe in horoscopes and horoscopes can in can manifest in that way where you have somebody who is because of their horoscopes afraid to live right like no, that man. yeah see like this is the point this guy's getting on is that you can use things in different toxic ways some people can use horoscopes in a in a toxic way where they kind of just blame all of their problems on on their on their star sign like oh i'm x thing so therefore i'm allowed to be this or this is just my nature and there's nothing you can do to stop it and there's nothing i can do to stop it you just have to deal with me as me and i'm not going to do any growing this is just who i am as as this individual as this star sign i was born this month so therefore i am this thing and that's the toxic toxic like you know use of that now the positive or like cope use of it or like the good use of it is that you might just look at it and go hey wow that's something that like connects with me and i can feel like related to this person or like certain things make me feel more comfortable based on these things and like that's fine like if you feel more comfortable in things based on whatever i mean that's that's probably okay any we see that manifestation like any at all like any belief in it whatsoever I, i've got a not the best opinion on horoscopes generally Safety if car. you want my like Jesus. absolute honest opinion but at they the same time if you're data. if somebody do I yeah, hit? you're talking about the essentialism thing. Oh, I uh, think I addressed that in my video to you a, what is it, a year ago. I feel the pit for mediums. Um, for... But like, How many and I think that there is like an essentialism problem that shows up with horoscope. Well, I have to pause this. Um, it's over here as well. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Oh, Magnuson, um, Mick just missed the pits. Okay, we can't pit Mick because he literally just drove by the pits. Um, Magnuson might be able to pit. 
So we can't pit Mick because there's no chance. And Magnuson has even... Oh, God. Uh, how many laps are left? Um, well, less than 40. I just don't know if there's a point in pitting. Because it's, it's Monaco. The only people that's worth it for pitting is these two. Shit. Do you pit? Do you pit right now? Let's just turn everything to conserve. Harvest. Harvest. Conserve. Conserve. It's only capacity noise. Um, fuck. Mick can't pit, and Mick would have been in a perfect position to pit. Maybe I missed... No, I didn't miss it. It literally came up as the option as Mick was turning around the corner. Um... So Mick can't pit, because he's literally at the front of the queue at this point. Uh, uh. But this Magnuson pit from all the way back there, with, some, with Alonzo right behind him, and if Alonzo doesn't pit, I, I don't know that I could pass Alonzo. With, because it's really hard to pass people on this course, and we don't know how long this is go. I could just, I could just continue with hearts for the rest of the race. I'm gonna risk not pitting. Sounds like there's been a crash. Oh, and it's Gasly who crashed, so that puts Mick in tenth. So yeah, we're definitely not pitting anymore. Uh, sorry, Gasly. Oh no. Oh god. Oh. Oh. Yeah, like Mick is literally at the front of the queue, quote unquote, when he's in tenth. Like we can't have Mick pit. There's no point. ERS is fully charged now. Neutral. I think he's gonna get reordered. Albon is the only one pitting. Alonzo. Alonzo gonna pit. Charge off. Botas pits maybe as well. Like, I just don't, I don't think it's worth it. Nobody in the front is pitting. Only Albon pitted. None of the front markers pitted. Bottas didn't pit. I'm not pitting. Nobody pitted. Except for the people at the very back of the race. Lap cars could go through. Okay, I'll bring my video. Oops, true. I think that well, this, uh, this if you get into some forms of uh, astrology, I see. Yeah, this is one of those things. This is a practice I'm not super familiar with, so it's not something that I would stake my arguments on. Um, so, but you can have like uh, fascistic expressions of it, definitely. Like that's, and I think that that's true of heathenry, my religion as well. You, there's definitely fascistic representations of heathenry where you get into heathens that engage in a supremacy narrative and that supremacy narrative winds up being a racist one. And but I don't want any of it. Right, I don't, I, so you're not, non... I'm against the supremacy narratives. They don't yeah, have don't to be against the religion in order to be against the supremacy narrative. But the religion's still a problem because it adds non-empirical factors into what would otherwise potentially be an empirical ethical analysis. And I mean, so do a lot of, like, if you're engaging in mathematics, if you're engaging in logic, you're going to have to start engaging in some non-empirical stuff. Empiricism is not an end-all be-all when it comes to finding truth. Well, and there's to... several studies across philosophy. So, yeah, yeah, okay, he's about to say it, but, like, this is what philosophy is. It's the empirical nature of, like, figuring stuff out, or unempirical empirical that do not deal with empiricism, and I would, like, among them would be History deals with empiricism on some level, but you still have to uh, make a certain amount of assumptions, such as the documents that you're reading are somewhat reliable as I'm accounts and that kind of shit. 
I'm not anti-philosophy, and I'm certainly not anti-analysis. I know that there are things that we do to obtain knowledge that go outside the bound of pure empirical measurement. Right. One of those things is theology. Religious people make empirical arguments or believe empirically in things that aren't empirical. So the belief in the existence of a god isn't a philosophical framework. It's not an analytical. You're saying they believe it empirically? If, if a person believes that something is capable of affecting the real world, analysis isn't. Analysis can't change the interaction of photons and molecules or whatever. Uh, philosophy can't. It informs the way we make empirical decisions. But if you believe there's a deity that can influence the physical world, you're making an empirical claim, not supported empirically. Safety car in this lap? This not even... No one's even... Abstract philosophy. We haven't even, like, reconnected. Like, I have to... Okay. Like, like an analytical... No, like a... Like a alliterative way of describing a, a process, you know. I would still take issue with it um, because this often takes the form of like the personification of natural phenomena, which impedes our understanding of it in a genuine empirical sense. My perspective just, on polytheism would be like uh, definitely into the realm of what you would be against then, because I'm holding as the gods as external agents. Minds, uh, we might talk about imminent polytheism or something like that, and get into the kind of the various. Forms then of you it, make, but then you think they're again, empirical. you're making an empirical claim there. Because if they affect no, the no, 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 I have felt that the mind is not physical. So, and I'm, I might be, uh, I've been leaning towards like idealism lately, yeah, as a, with respect to like my philosophy of what the external world is. So, um, but can they, but like these gods, I mean, if they can direct the winds or control energy or matter mm -hmm. or anything like that, they must necessarily be empirical phenomena. In the yeah, you could probably empiric. say some empirical things about the areas that they manifest. Like, you could probably predict where the rain is going and say that that's Frere or something like that. But I don't think that um, that, that gives you necessarily access to Frere's mind or Fuck, anything. Fuck, like, why, why was Just Landon Norris allowed to catch up? the parts of the brain doesn't necessarily... Uh, uh, and I can't catch up to Alonzo. Okay. And, yeah, you know, maybe we'll you... develop that technology at some point, and it'd be interesting to see how that affects God belief maybe or how did, we can interact with... Like, if you have the ability... Like, why the fuck is Latifi here? ...that is able to read a mind... And utilize Whoever that in order to have some really. sort of communication Get out of my with the gods, and that starts getting You're fucking my shit up, bro. Then you start having empirical conversations about minds and gods and all of that kind of shit, and you wind up ha answering a few questions. Where's the blue flag on this guy? To, Jesus. Uh, Mind-body problem and all this other there. philosophical oh, crap that we've been hitting our heads with for millennia. Like that's not where we're at right now. Speed up and catch up to bodies. You know I mean? I've been in DRS range. Dances. I mean, it's, it's a, it's I'm slowly a, separating from I have no problem with rain dances. I, I know, but I do because they cause people to starve because they thought they could solve their family. Okay, here's another issue that. So this is the other toxic, non-toxic thing that 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 Vosh would get into. Because I don't understand like like some people's religious practices or some places' religious practices. Um, you don't have to starve. Like rain dances are inherent to being starving. Okay, some people do a rain dance and then and then based on whether or not this rain dance. Like, so the toxic way of doing it is that you rain dance and you do nothing else until, until, like, the rain comes. And you just keep doing that, doing that, and then you die. And now, historically, those tribes probably died off. So those tribes probably don't even exist if they did that because they would have just killed them off. So how this actually manifests in the real world is that people will do a rain dance as, as an attempt to see if things go. Because sometimes it works. And if it doesn't work, they go, okay, hey, maybe there's something, maybe there's something else that, um... Maybe there's something else that the gods are mad at us for, so let's try something different. And then they switch up, and they may, you know, maybe go out and find water. Maybe the gods are, like, you know, they might say that maybe the gods are mad that we're at this location, so we're going to move to a different location and look for water elsewhere. And then they move and look for water elsewhere, and then they find water, and they go, Oh my god, uh, it's a sign from god that we were supposed to move. Right? That's how that can manifest in, like, non-toxic ways. And then the toxic way, you just die from, and that tribe was, like, dead, like, 10,000 years ago. We don't need to worry about them. Evolution took care of them. And, like, today, if people are thinking that way, then, like, well, they're just, like, typically not. Like, that's not usually the manifestation of rain dances. And if it does, in, like, some ways, then that's, like, the bad, that's the toxic part. You can tackle that. But, like, the issue of rain dancing isn't the problem. By dancing instead of other approaches towards, um, towards agricultural management. It doesn't do anything. Who the hell is behind right. Uh, I don't know? think that it matters necessarily, like, as far as this conversation goes, what, as, as far as the arguments, whether or not God exists. I think that where I can hang my hat on and where you can hang your hat on is uh, that when you get into the upper echelons of the philosophical now. conversation, this isn't a settled matter. 
And I think that I've even heard you say that we should be withholding judgment at the end of the day, right? I'm too far behind Botas now because that's stupid. I'll withhold judgment with Tifi. Maybe there's Alba. I don't know. Why I two. reject these ideas? I mean, I have to be forthcoming about it. I, I think it brings ruin. Um, and it's an unreliable way of assessing a person's ethics, you know? No matter how you came to believe in what you believe in, the gods or whatever, you got that from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And if you got that from somewhere, that means there's a source from which you can derive non-empirical beliefs. And all right. Would uh, I mean, you believe that it... that source of information for you to potentially believe in the validity, like the nature, like human sacrifice. You know, people yeah. did that for their polytheistic deities. And mm -hmm. how could I morally argue you out of that? If you because genuinely intent, believe really that a famine could be that settled with the human sacrifice, if that's an empirical belief that you hold, ethically, you're in the Catch right. Up to, the problem uh, is that your um, predicating beliefs are incorrect. Mm -hmm. The existence of that god, the value of the human sacrifice. But I could never argue you out of that. So arguments against human sacrifice show up with Plutarch. Uh, and I think that, again, we can talk about pluralism with respect to human sacrifice. Harmful practices are going to be the kind of thing which, as a pluralist, you're going to be objecting to. Why? Pluralism, if I think, is going to be a better strategy us. here. But if What's the up? gods will reward us with bounty and food, if we prefer... I'd argue food. even then, you it's if even if you try to argue that kind of thing, I don't think that you could demonstrate that, first off. And second, I don't think that uh, even if it's true, it's something that is worth engaging in because of the harmful practice nature of it. Well, we're not basing our beliefs on whether we can demonstrate it. That's the whole point. You don't either. Right. But so if you're going to say that it's a good practice to do, you need to be able to demonstrate on some level that it's a good practice to do. And that's not... Uh, if you're going to... Especially with respect okay to with harming somebody... So what? You said you're okay with rain dances. Yeah. There's not a harmful element to that. Well, there's a very beneficial element to potentially ending a drought or a famine, right? I mean, right. If they like if that. somebody is, I'd say that if you're, uh, you know, if somebody is engaging in rain dances and or prayers for rain or something like that, that's not necessarily a problem because it's not a harmful practice. Right. When you're talking about human sacrifice. All of a sudden, you're dealing with harmful practices, right? If if people believe enough in the idea that showing glory to a deity will bring good mm -hmm. to do a rain dance, human sacrifices aren't that far off. You we object to that to the same way we object to political beliefs that have the same kind of consequences. Genocide, but, group X, therefore, and... Yeah, exactly. So, like, this guy's getting into the, pretty much on the exact point of, like... The difference between those two things, like the line that makes one thing unethical and ethical, is the same for any thing. That's the that's where the empir like that's where the non empirical thing comes from. Um, that line between sacrificing somebody and just doing a rain dance, like that's you having religion or not having religious doesn't solve that problem. Um, people will kill things because they think it's the right thing to do. Like they might sacrifice. They go, oh, you know, hey. In the Holodomor or whatever, we got to sacrifice these uh, Ukrainians because of, uh, or whatever, the, what, was the Holodomor or that? I think so, right? I could be getting this wrong, but anyways, uh, during the Holodomor, we got to sacrifice these people for the greater good. That's like the same line of thinking. And that'll be better for our society? But you know what I mean? Like that's a religion. I can do empirics in there. Right, you're going to be arguing against something that can't be demonstrated until, you know what I mean? Like this. No, if you're at the point, religious people don't wait to see if it's demonstrated. Christian neither society. do the political narratives. The, yeah, if you have the political narrative that is like, hey, let's do genocide X, then you're not going to have people that are going to go, oh, well, can you demonstrate that first or whatever the fuck? Like that's we've, we've seen that a couple of times in history, right? Well, Where for, wait, first of all, most genocides have been committed by religious people. So we're kind of shaking like we're arguing on shaky ground, like from the get go um, there. And second, right. Well, you're talking about mass murders of uh, populations. But I'm not I'm, arguing okay. that secular this people before. are Sorry, always more. rational. I'm only saying that adding the religiosity as an, adi an additional extra layer of like mm -hmm. immutable political like invulnerability when it comes to argumentation if a group of people or like a community get to or culture better. or whatever believe there are gods in the sky that do reward them uh with rain or with food or with bounty when they show those gods glory the step up to human sacrifice is a totally rational one this is why i hate that like westerners arrogantly look in the same yeah but this is the problem Vosh. in the same way that someone can look empirically at evidence that like, oh, if we just sacrifice these lives, it's like, it's better for the greater good. Look, we worked these people to death or whatever, and they died, but we got to feed a hundred people. 
and then they can they can self like they can keep doing that until like they're getting into like borderline full full fledged like um genocides of 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 people just simply because they think they're doing the correct thing when there was a better outcome the whole time they just never tried it because they thought that their empirical evidence was with them that's the that's the issue down on human sacrifice and like as did I actually that. pass him? Oh, dude, like so that's so much more barbaric than the fucking crusades years. which had like okay. 5,000, 10,000, 500,000 I'm not going to be defending the crusades either crusades are obviously a harmful no, practice I, I, and anti-pluralist right so like and I mean wait, as a pagan I'm not going to have a good position on, on the crusades I think that even Christianity in general you might be able to make some pluralist arguments against however uh, because I think that with Christianity we find a uh, proclivity towards authoritarianism and that proclivity towards authoritarianism is what lends to shit where you get into the justification of harmful practices regardless of the effect because well, now not, you have a supremacy narrative now you have authoritarianism but i'm not saying that you're would be pro-crusades i'm only arguing that from the perspective of the aztecs the idea of human sacrifice was an empirically justifiable one they already believed that showing glory to the gods would bring them bounty so empirical I was, wait what do you think empirical is uh oh because they thought the gods were an empirical force in the world. If you presuppose that, that the gods exist empirically, Wait, and they can what? affect the world. What is empirical? Like, sorry, maybe material. Maybe I'm misusing the word. Like a material. Okay. They believe the gods are a material force in the world. I don't and think that they thought that. I don't, that. As, as polytheists, we generally hold that the um, non-physicalness is an aspect of the, or as sure part of the... The, the but, Aztecs did believe that the Aztecs the gods... were not physicalists, and regardless, as, well, as far as like the Aztecs being, we can take it to another. Let's move from the Aztecs to uh, the history no, of my I religion. Hold on, one second, one second. Wait, you can't one second. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, I want to give. Whoa, whoa. You can still talk about human sacrifice. I just want to move it to a religion I'm more familiar with. Uh, we can talk about the history of my own religion, which has human sacrifice in it, and we can discuss it from there. It's just I want to move it out of like. Uh, out of, out of that conversation into one that I have a little bit more familiarity with, but still has the same problem so that we can discuss it substantively. Okay. All right, go ahead. So heathens in the past did human sacrifices to Odin. Yes, yes, we agree on that. So go ahead and make your point. Okay. If they believe that the gods are a material force in the world, which they did, even if they didn't believe the gods would show up and fuck them physically, but they did believe that. I know... I. I, it was Odin and Thor. They you had some humorous beliefs with history, yeah. They've got uh, Snorri talking about how Freyr is part of the royal family of Sweden or yeah, whatever. They literally yeah. thought, yeah, like in. Uh, it's, the it's a Christian's record, but you know. Anyway, whatever. Uh, Go ahead. They thought even even if they were just metaphysical forces, Thor being lightning would mean that he could affect the world materially. And if you mm -hmm. believe those things, if that's a material belief that you hold un unerringly, you know. Um, people would be executed for like for heresy i mean you know you have to believe this to varying extents it is not irrational it is purely logical to then go yeah human sacrifices to honor the gods are a good thing that's it that's a correct argument if you presuppose the existence of those gods and that's what makes the religion you can have cool. the existence of the gods and you can even hold the human sacrifices effective or whatever not my position but let's like let's talk about it you can still at that point hold a pluralist position and say regardless of whatever effect human sacrifice has regardless of it you it's still not a preferable position to, or preferable practice to have because of They're the harm the associated with it doesn't matter it do if the gods are asking you to do matter. things that are unethical then fuck that shit. The, for, the, right like that's and that's easy enough to convince somebody to do if the gods are asking you to harm people that are your friends there's no reason to actually listen to that shit. But they thought the gods would raise their villages. They, the, I, the Norse, the, 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 the pagans didn't believe that the gods were um, necessarily the arbiters of morality, but they did believe they'd be punished for not showing due deference to the gods. Um, so if it's like if and that's not something okay so this gets into a, this gets into a, a misunderstanding of history with respect to pagan belief where uh, it's like, well, they worship the gods because they were afraid of them on some level. This is not what we see bearing out in history when we read these people actually discussing their own religions. Um, usually what's going on is that we see people that are 
uh, giving and sacrifice and engaging in a system of reciprocity, gifts for a gift, that the, the gods give gifts and they give gifts in return. It's not like, oh, well, we didn't sacrifice to the gods, therefore we're going to be experiencing a tsunami tomorrow or some shit, or that uh, human sacrifices were not participated in or whatever. Like, this is getting into, like, highly they, superstitious beliefs, which we have fought. records of people in history bitching about and saying this is a terrible problem. Yeah, so, so now the, the point is kind of shifting to like, so Vosh thinks that, that inherently within religion, inherently within religion, you're going to get into superstitious arguments just naturally. You're going you're gonna to fall into that. And this guy's point, which he's correct on, is that anybody can get into superstitious beliefs about anything. So the same way that, the same way that people argued in the past about whether or not we should do rain dances or sacrifice people, we're talking about today about like, should we give, uh, should should kids that are under 18 years of age be able to have access to HRT? Okay, right? And then in 100 years from now, if if kids are totally within their means to be able to get HRT 100%, and like you're like, it's totally normal for for people under 16 to 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 to, to transition into whatever. Or in the future, if we uh, move to like full veganism, right? Or like we don't we don't we don't process any meat or whatsoever. We just like lab grow it. We might look back on this and go. Wow, guys, we had people who were, uh, who were, like, non-religious, arguing for the, the, the sacrifice of animals to feed themselves. How, how irresponsible and in, un, un, unempirical of them to do that? Why couldn't they just think better about, about their ideas? And, and it's just because you have, like, no, it's just, yeah, it's just a frame of, like, reference to, like, what the fuck's going on at the time. So, we could be arguing about something today that we think is, like, kind of, you know, could go either way. And in the future, we might be all, like, looking back on it like, wow, how unempirical of us to be arguing about this. That's, like, essentially what Vosh, the, the pit that Vosh is walking into. The Vosh pit that he's walking into. Is that he's looking back on things in the past and kind of ignoring the context of everything around that. And just thinking, like, oh, wow, they were so dumb. They were so unempirical about their stuff. But in reality, what happened is that... They have no means of like testing this stuff or like no really reason to so you know one guy argues we should do this hey you know it seems like when we kill people <laughs> when we sacrifice people there's more rain or whatever for our crops and someone else goes like no that's not true at all you know when we do rain dances we get the same amount of, of rain as if we did um as if we did human sacrifice so we should just keep doing rain dances or whatever and blah blah, blah. it's like that's the that's what he's talking about here is that at the time, you can see that there were arguments about what is right and wrong all the time. And that can't happen in Vasha's idea of, like, a god. Because they all believe in the same god, right? They all believe in the same god. Why aren't they all getting the same message from that god? And that's for the same reasons why some um, empirical things would be seen the same way. in our Practice. Sense. Stop fucking doing it because of the they consequences of it. There would be consequences for not venerating the gods and benefits to venerating the gods. That's pretty common across. And like the consequence to human sacrifice is dead humans. Dead so, humans happen all the time. You you lose humans sending them out on hunting expeditions, but you execute one for the sake of keeping the god from raising your village or ending a drought. That's an ethical like argument that lands in your favor. Ethically, it, like if you send a group of people out in a hunting party or a raiding party, we're talking about Vikings here after all. You're far right. more likely more death for less gain than maintaining a studious and reverent relationship with your deities so human sacrifice is a I know, but the, the studious and reverent relationship with your deity isn't there like you have to get something out of it um so if you just if you sacrifice somebody for uh for uh, for rain and you're like okay now you know we're gonna have bountiful rain because we did this and you don't you stop doing that practice because you feel like you've angered the gods that's like the whole thing that's what he's getting at is that like they used empirical quote unquote empirical means at, at this point none none of anything they're talking about is empirical i guess but or maybe it all is technically if you want to look at it on any side of the coin right they used quote unquote empirical methods to justify how they if they would do rain dances or if they would do sacrifices or if they wouldn't do anything at all so what would happen is that you know they might send somebody out on on a on a raid and they go get stuff and they and they find out that Okay, going on raids gets us this, and we lose, like, 10 men per, like, 100-person raid party, okay? Cool. Now we're, we're going to do a human sacrifice. Uh, another group of people somewhere else did a human sacrifice 
and they got nothing for it. They actually all died because they starved to death. Okay, we're not going to do human sacrifices anymore. Uh, but on the other hand, sometimes you fall into coincidences where you go out on a, you go out, uh, you out go out and human sacrifice somebody, and you get bountiful rain, and you have the you have the best crop growth you ever did. So now maybe you do uh, human sacrifices until it kind of doesn't work anymore. And, and then you and then if it goes on long enough, you might have a culture of doing human sacrifices, and that just kind of happens. But in the same way that you might go out on raiding parties, and you do raiding parties because it works, and you st continue doing raiding parties until one day you send out a raiding party, and everyone fucking dies, and then they come back and raid your village, and you die, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's the same thing. Uh, both can be just as quote unquote bountiful. Logical thing to do. But we see also in history that if the gods do not receive sacrifice, that the substantive damages that happen is not necessarily that that kind of severe. People have been Christian for a long time, and especially now, right? Like if you're gonna if we're gonna be talking about religiosity now, with the arguments that we have access to, and not just what people think are possible religions that exist. You know what I mean? Because I think that what you're talking about is like, well, if we have a possibility of this religion in which we can possibly come to that conclusion and all that kind of stuff, this is where we get into the religion analogy or the uh, politics analogy really quickly, that you can have people that are organized by uh, atheistically, fascistically, and the problem there is going to be the authoritarianism. The problem with what you're talking about is the authoritarian aspect. Not necessarily no, just mere God no, belief at that point. It's the reasoning process. It's the belief in anything spiritual that does this. It's not the authoritarian aspect. There's, if you believe... If you, if that's, that okay, God, if please, it's... Please, please, please. Okay, if you believe sure. there's a literal God that dictates the reins and that it's represented by a capricious woman and that glory to that woman in the me. form of sacrifice will bring the reins and end the drought, that mm -hmm. what all, all of the predicating beliefs all of the material assumptions about the nature oh, of rain and that god now you have a logical argument for human sacrifice that's not about you can come up with a logical thing. argument for inhumane shit all the fucking time the thing that i'm saying and the, and the point one second the point of this discussion of which i'm trying to do is not necessarily argue that in any religious construction you're going to be able to get entirely uh you know moral people or moral beliefs in any subset. I don't think that that's something you can say about any set of beliefs. You have, when you get into an extremism or fundamentalism representation of any religion, you wind up with these serious problems. Or, and that goes true for any ideology in general, beyond the spiritual shit. No, this, hold on, stop. the no, spiritual no, 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 shit no, 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 winds no, no, no. up, wait, uh, wait, you get, you get extremist? You what do you mean? You can't equivocate this to extremist political systems. My argument- This, this is, the, it is the same thing. Extreme religion. I'm arguing against the very concept of making statements about the material world based on metaphysical presumptions. It has nothing to do with how well, we've already agreed is. that metaphysical presumptions said, can be made I, with effect, right? Like that you, it, in order to study history, in order to study logic, in order to even to get anywhere in theology, in order to get anywhere with logic in the first place. You're going to need to make some metaphysical assumptions in order to engage with the external world. You need to make hey, metaphysical no, that, assumptions. No. Outside Come on, we already agreed with that earlier. Engaging with the world, that's not the same as also believing in deities that control the rain. Right. There if you want to explore spiritually, there are certain assumptions you're going to make. Just like if you want to explore history, there's going to be certain assumptions you're going to make. You want to explore mathematics, there's certain assumptions you need to make. Any metaphysical assumptions to understand history at all you don't have to you can keep that entirely within the material world the metaphysics in our case are just bridging consciousness gaps you don't need to then go okay because we have to bridge the consciousness gap therefore it's okay to believe in fucking odin like you don't you can't jump that and then then run to any metaphysics. No, you did you have different arguments with respect to deities right like so with polytheism arguments are going to be related to personal experience the diversity of personal experiences and then at that point you're going to be getting into some form of polytheism that's the general steps that you're going to be able to get there and people are going to continue to have spiritual experiences people are going to continue to explore spirituality on the basis of those assumptions it's something that you agreed earlier in this conversation we're just going to have to deal with yes, so yes, from that perspective how do you deal with that socially and that's where i'm saying pluralism is preferable to anti-theism because well, anti-theism no, in my opinion is just another supremacy narrative at the end of the day pluralism is not that make them racist or sexist because we have tribal instincts like buried deep in our lizard brain. Right, I'm not saying trust every experience, right? Oh no, Russell! So, right. Even no. though they are going to keep having tribalistic biases ingrained into their brains, I think you should still principally fight against that What the problem the is and articulate what the actual issue is at the end of the day. And that's where I'm saying all the examples that you're bringing up are extremist fundamentalist expressions of religion.
No, they're not. Were you I talking about? I, I, were you talking about? Six, though, nice. but horoscopes. That's not an extremist fundamentalist aspect of religion. And horoscopes, we can probably agree, can be practiced without anybody dying in the process. And I think that you you make a point with respect to horoscopes where it talks about essentializing people, and on that I agree with you on. And I think I've said as much in the past. But I don't I I don't think that when you're looking at practices in general, you should be looking at them under the uh, auspices of what harm they cause and then making a judgment call on that effect. Because people, yes, again, are going to be religious. People are going to continue exploring religiosity. If you want to talk about the harm religion is causing right now, then you're going to have to wait for fundamentalist Christians to die off. Because we're talking I, yeah, about... I, we need to be able to criticize fundamentalist Christians without attacking our allies, right? Wait, and yeah, that's why I'm saying pluralism allies, is the way to go. There are allies who have toxic masculine tendencies. You can still target toxic masculinity while being, like... You, you, you're jumping between, like spiritual critiques and ethical positions and like the pragmatics because the, the, of coalition build. The spiritual critiques that you're making and the spiritual critiques that I think that are a good system to go under are both ethical considerations. Right? If unless you think that human sacrifice is bad for some reason other than ethical ethical reasons. I think that it's bad for ethical reasons unless right. you believe that there's a god who will end a drought, in which case I think it's ethically good to do because you've now established supernatural... That's just a bad argument. I think it, no, at, at that no, point, wait, no. I If you're going to you're wait, say that human that sacrifice bad. is ethical under certain considerations... Wait, absolutely. Wait. Why? Especially back in those days, we sacrificed people all the time to go on hunting trips, to go on expeditions, to go gather resources. Right. All the time they lost people. If you could end a drought that's plaguing a country of millions with a human sacrifice, that is an incredibly straightforward ethical assumption. And Yeah, exactly. But the, the problem is, and I'm pretty sure I'll get into this, is that is that it's not like people just did that and it worked. It has to work. People don't just do random shit and, it, and, and if it doesn't work, they just keep doing it. That's the weird thing that Vosh is getting into is that he thinks that he thinks that uh, religious people just kind of did some shit and and it, whether it worked or didn't work, they just kept doing it for no reason, um, other than like the a, a weird random twisted again. The, I'm using the word twisted, but Vosh just doesn't think there's anything different with that. Where it's like, no, yeah, it's not twisted. That's just their idea of what God is. Is that they just tell them to sacrifice people and we're gonna do it, and we don't care if we die of starvation. You know, that's God's will. But that's not how everyone thinks. You would send people on an expeditions, you look at the sacrifices, you go, okay, hey, maybe an expedition goes really bad, and you go, hmm, maybe this time we're going to uh, try using, we're going to try instead just doing a rain dance, uh, and, and see, like, what that gets us. And then maybe you get a bountiful, you get, like, a more bountiful kind of harvest, and you send less people out on your expedition because of that, and that saves more people overall. Or, you do your rain dance, you get less uh, out of it than you thought. Now you have to do more raiding, and now you've sacrificed more people. So maybe you never do the rain dance again. At that this, time. at at, and in this time period, that is an extremist notion, right? Uh, there are places in the world right now that are suffering from drought. What if you could end? What if you could, like in West Africa, end malaria with a human sacrifice? Can it be done? Well, I'm not religious, so no. right. I'm, but I'm, and I, that's that not an expression of religion that I would be holding to. I think that if, if you're going to be engaging in harmful practices, charge it should not be on. done. Don't charge on actually. But harmful practice is bad. If right, and we can make criticisms of religions on the basis of harmful practices. We would be saving hundreds of thousands of lives. If you believe as much gaps we can agree, it's an ethically right thing to do. Like, hey, any does anyone volunteer in the entirety of West Africa? One person is willing to lay themselves down the table. I'm not, like I'm not interested in getting convinced into some sort of human sacrifice notion. Wait, it's wait, not something you, that I would hold. If you believe that malaria, the biggest killer of humans, next to like cancer or whatever, could be ended. Yeah, this is con yeah, as my chat's kind of pointing this out. This is consequentialist thinking. I'm, I am I'm within. Yeah, you're. If that would be a big difference between us then, because I think that an one. action that is ethically wrong is not going to be the best approach in order to actually deal with a it, problem like it this. It wouldn't be an action that's ethically wrong. The consequences of it would be good. Therefore, it would be. Yeah, this is this is the problem. I don't the Okay, the consequences of it would be good, but how do you know that? If you sacrifice somebody for a, a for a for a bountiful harvest and the bountiful harvest doesn't come, what religious people at the time would do is go, "Hey, wow, our god didn't like that. Let's not do that again." That doesn't seem like a good idea because our god didn't respond to it at all. That's the point. Sequentialism, not a problem. You you just seem to have this weird thing that like for some reason people sacrificed sacrificed 
human beings and it worked? Like what? Problem with religious thinking. No, it, it, it's, this is very basic. Religious like your, this is your position, not mine at this point. That you're saying that if you held religiosity Wait, and were a consequentialist, this would be the result, right? But this is a problem with consequentialism. Yeah. That malaria could be ended with that. You would then say, no, malaria should continue. Hundreds of thousands should die every year. Not one person. I think that at some point, you, if, if you have that situation as a reality, then you're going to find like a couple of consequentialists that are probably going to be engaging with that on a consensual basis between each other. And then the problem does whatever it does. But that does not mean that I'm necessarily going to be condoning it because I'm not a fucking consequentialist at the end of the day. I'm, I believe that if you're going to be having practices that are harmful, then you need to be criticizing those practices on the basis of harm. But right? Well, you need this, those, be they can be, or, sorry, I misspoke. They, uh, these practices can be criticized on the basis of their harm, right? So like allowing malaria to continue, which would be the consequence of not allowing something. That's not, to is the religious practice is not doing something a practice. I'm sorry? Is not doing something a practice. Wait, absolutely. You're, okay. you're absolutely then responsible we're, for what happens if you choose not to do something, yes. Okay. Um, then, sure. And that can be like a... I feel like you should run an example by by Vosh. And it's like, okay. So, like, what do you think? Because I, I, I'm at this point where he's looped so many times, I don't even know where the fuck he's... I, I don't even know how he's... I don't even know where Vosh is anymore. So I'll run him through... No, you don't. Um, okay. I would run Vosh through an example of like, oh, okay... Um, what would I say to him? Okay, I, yeah, I would have to run him through an example to see how he responds to this stuff. Because I'm, like, actually lost at this point, where Vosh just keeps, like... At this point, I think Vosh thinks that sacrifice actually worked. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Because... So, so I'll run an example. Okay, so you have a tribe of pagans, whatever. And they, and they uh, believe that their god gives gifts, and they give gifts in return to appease the gods okay they go out and their typical days they go they so a tr one tribe it's actually this is a, a proper example one tribe goes out and raids and they get a bountiful harvest okay they feed their they feed their entire village plus some another village um another village who farms more, does a rain dance, or sorry, fuck, I don't know which one would get better. Uh, you could, you might flip this example, this last example, based on how I'm feeling, because it, because it, depending on like the answer I get out of it, it could be better or worse. Because he thinks that the thing of rain dance is the bad thing. Um, so I'll do it the other way. Um, so one tribe does nothing and just farms like normal. They don't go out and raid. They just farm and they get a a decent harvest okay they get to feed their village and and that's about it they just get to feed the village nothing extra another another tribe does uh, a rain dance or sorry the tribe I just described doesn't do a rain dance they do nothing this, this tribe does a rain dance and they get a a a bad harvest people die of starvation because they couldn't get enough food and they did the rain dance what do you think is gonna happen next year for each of these tribes. And then hopefully the response is the tribe that did nothing might continue to do nothing. They might try a rain dance and they might try a raid. The tribe that raided will raid and continue to raid until it doesn't work anymore. And the tribe that did the rain dance and got a horrible harvest would probably not do a rain dance again. And they might go raiding because let's say they saw the other tribe and they might follow their their thing maybe maybe because they had a bad harvest that tribe came over and took over their tribe right so now they're doing their practice or maybe they just they just naturally you know decide to do some raiding instead or or they do nothing that's like what's gonna happen and then over years and years of like things happening they may um they may change their thought process oh god norse is caught up attack go hard deploy okay we're okay to push they'll let him take you same here attack deploy they'll let him catch up to you you have two laps to go Just push. 
Uh, but yeah, I would want to run that example by Vosh to see how he responds to each thing. Because what it sounds like right now is that Vosh thinks that um, the 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 people that do a rain dance are inherently doing something wrong, essentially. Oh, just a second behind. Norris is on his tail. That's like that's like the feeling I'm getting right now. I don't know. A large ethical conversation, but I think that at that point you're going to want to talk about what, like, how effective those practices are going to be. Well, and now at that point, if this if this situation arises, what is going to be your position? Do you hold that we should do the human sacrifice at that point? To save hundred. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's, and then that's, that's that would be your position. I'm sure. I'm not necessarily oh, wait. of that position because you go over it? because of the harm. Do you hold and talk about what, like? How effective? Okay. Um, then sure, and that can be like a large ethical conversation. But I think that at that point you're going to want to talk about what, like, how effective those practices are going to be. Well, honey, and now well, at that point, if this if this situation arises, what is going to be your position? Do you hold that we should do the human sacrifice at that point? To save hundred. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And then that's, that's that would be your position. Safe. I'm I'm not necessarily of that position because of the harmful okay. practice charge aspect. I like. Because then we're opening the door to doing human sacrifice for all kinds of stuff. We're building a cultural narrative and sort of in, to getting into human sacrifices as a regular practice generally. And that's military. something that is going to be created. Oh, wait, fine. <laughs> that, okay. Then we're, we're what some, which would be the consequence of. Sorry, I misspoke. They, uh, these practices can be criticized on the basis of their harm, right? So. Like Sorry, it's just not like he did what I said. Which would be do. the consequence of not imagine. allowing something. That's not, to be is the practice. religious practice is not doing something a practice? I'm sorry? Is not doing something a practice? Have, wait, absolutely. You're, okay. you're absolutely then responsible we're, for what happens if you choose not to do something, yes. Okay. Um, then, sure. And that can be like a large ethical conversation. But I think that at that point, you're going to want to talk about what, like, how effective those practices are going to be. Well, honey, and now, well, at that point, if this if this situation arises, what is going to be your position? Do you hold that we should do the human sacrifice at that point? To save hundred. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Because and then like that's, that would be your position. Big. I'm I'm not necessarily of that position because of the harmful practice aspect. No, no, I, like no. Because then we're opening the door to doing human sacrifice Fuck. for all kinds of stuff. We're building man. a cultural narrative and sort of in, to getting into human sacrifice as a regular practice generally. Oh, no. And that's poetry. something that is going to be creating a superstitious angle. And I'm not into we, that. We sacrifice our soldiers so that they can affect good, like, geopolitical outcomes. World War II. Fuck. No way I'm not going to get yeah, points. Oh, my God. I'm going to kill myself. Can die because it's better. That's a little bit different of a practice. Like, a fight is a different practice than, like, killing them yourself. Blood is the only relevant human currency when it comes to great actions that are recorded in history books, I'm afraid. No matter what you choose, yes, oh, he's just no, faster. I just don't think there's anything sure. you're going to do. But you're going to also we'll agree that some of those actions are unethical. Area. You can make an unethical yeah, action and have beneficial know, consequences from it. This ends justify the means, and we see that throughout history, too. It doesn't mean it's something we ought do. Well, that's consequentialism. If the, the ends do Right, and that's where our, a big difference between us. Let me try and make this argument in a way to appeal to the consequentialism, though. So if you're going to be, if you're wanting to uh, engage in a way, engage in a way that is going to create change, you're going to want to get as many people on your side as possible. And therefore you're going to be wanting to be a standard rather than an anti standard. Reaching out to guys who have like toxic masculine aspects, but I'll still sit on here and argue that toxic masculinity is bad for like seven hours straight. This is sure. I'm not pitching this to a crowd right now. I'm just talking about my basic beliefs about what types of thoughts are good, what's structured well. I'm not making like the case for like the the the, the pan-religious like socialist union of America or whatever. If I was, then I wouldn't talk about any of this because I don't think I can convince anyone or affect any positive change like while pitching it there behind the podium. Right. If but you're right if, here, if, if you're going to hold a position that is anti-theist, then and then when you're expressing it on your channel, you're engaging in political action, right? I talk about toxic masculinity on my channel. Right. You talk about to, and that's good. So do I. I've got a, a video on toxic masculinity as well. So. Uh, we're on the same page with respect to that. But we're, I think that we would agree that toxic masculinity is in all cases bad, right? Well, if it's toxic masculinity, by definition, it has to be bad. Right. So we can also talk about toxic religiosity, right? Uh, 
Well, I would just think religiosity is toxic for religiosity. Right. And so he, like, I think that with masculinity, you can have beneficial expressions of masculinity and you can have beneficial expressions of, religi of religiosity. We can just, we can That's separate fine. those issues by saying we're not demonizing masculinity. We're talking about toxic masculinity and we're not demonizing religiosity. We're talking about toxic religiosity. And I that's the criticisms that were that were being made by uh, Plutarch and Theophrastus in the past. They were talking about toxic expressions of religiosity. But I am talking about all religiosity. It's not about the outcomes. It's the thought process. And so there's no beneficial religiosity to you. Everything that can be done from religiosity that is good can be done through secular means. And even if that wasn't the case, I would still be against religiosity. It is so far down. I, even I if it wasn't the case. Okay. Part. I like I, this is. You can get this is you where we get into through. toxic narratives of uh, atheism, in my opinion. This is a this where, if you have toxic veganism, if you have toxic leftism, you get like fucking tankies that have narratives in True. which they're better than everybody else. If you have toxic Christianity, that's when you get into authoritarian fundamentalism, where everybody they think they're better than everybody else. If you have toxic pagans, you get folkists who are racist shitheads who think they're better than everybody else, and then you have toxic atheists who are anti-theists who engage in a supremacy narrative in which they think they're better than everybody else and want the world to be secular. Wait, please stop. Okay, go ahead. Again. It's not about being better than religious people. There are plenty of religious people who are in almost every imaginable sense more accomplished and more impressive than I am. It is about religion, the openness to spiritualism, being a fundamentally destructive thought process that erodes the ability to Same make- Same argument applies to politics, man. No, like if you're, if you're open politics, to political narratives, then you're open to toxic true. political narratives. You, it's not about whether or not it's talk. You keep, okay, again, I just, it's just, this is the, the, you, the toxic masculinity thing is such a great, is such a better example because. It's not about toxic religion versus non-toxic. I am attacking all of it. Right. So, Unjustifiably, I think. Okay. You yeah. may think that. Go ahead. You keep, you keep relating this to like, well, politics can have bad outcomes. I know everything right. can have bad outcomes. Because the criticism you're applying applies there. No, it isn't. Because okay. I think religiosity fundamentally erodes the capacity to make logical arguments because you're capable of adding supernatural justifications for ethical arguments. There's a whole a study of philosophy of religion that it requires logical arguments of people going back and forth over this issue. And if, if what you were saying was true, hold on, if what you're saying was true, in, in philosophy of religion, you would have the atheist being like, these theists are absolutely crazy. They're not using logical arguments no, at all, I right? I say religious people can't use logic. There are plenty of logical religious right, people. But you said fundamentally, which means yeah, that, it's, right? It's like, like, yeah, so it's fundamentally an issue, which means it's that it's not. A, there's not exceptions. No, yes, that is correct. Religion okay. is fundamentally an erosive force when it comes to rational thought but there are still rational people in spite of their religion much in the same way that there are people who are overwhelmingly good but you might say that it's like fundamentally bad to under tip waiters so you can have people who are like 99.9 percent .9 good but they always under tip the waiters and that's shitty of them to do and that should be criticized but it's still possible to be like a generally really great person i don't yeah this is this is a, just a claim that you're not able to demonstrate in my opinion like you have positive manifestations of religion. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. If I okay, if I am a rational, um, uh, uh, um, uh, non-religious person, as long as you and I have the same basic axioms of well-being, mm -hmm. it should always be possible to change my mind on something. If you give counterexamples on empirics, you should always be able to adjust my position. There's always going to be some variety there because so much of what people understand about the world right, is You'd have a rational atheist and all that kind of stuff. I think that we've, we've already agreed on that. Yeah, but, so, but it, theoretically, if you took a rational person mm -hmm. and they were a, 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 a secular, it should be possible. But if there was a religious person who had super like supernatural justifications for some of their positions, beliefs about the world that aren't tied directly to empirical analysis, even if you had the same basic axioms, if they had a disagreement with you based on some of those presuppositions, it would not be possible to change their mind because it's rooted in something outside the bounds of physical logic. You would have to- This is where, all right, so again, this is like where I was talking about ethical constraints on religion that we've seen manifest in history a few times, going back to Plutarch and Theophrastus where Plutarch is criticizing um, the superstitious, the superstitiousness of human sacrifice and as a harmful practice and the effects of that. And then uh, Theophrastus is talking about um, superstition as it relates to the harm to your personal life. I'm now, you can, 
convince such a person that they were wrong in what they were doing? If you can demonstrate it to them, I think that I, it's, it can be difficult, but I think it's difficult to convince people uh, that they're wrong on things that they're wrong about generally. Ever tried convincing you know? a religious person that they're following their religious doctrine too closely? That you think that's it's yeah, easy to that's that's them something them. that comes up. I've I've managed a, a community full of religious people. We have conversations around that all the time, uh, with respect to okay, wait, is there's uh, mythic literalism is something that I that crit is criticized within my community. That's basically within Christianity that would manifest as creationism. I think that that when you're taking uh, religious documents to a absolute literal standpoint, you're going to get ridiculous results like thinking that plants predate the sun, which can be empirically shown is not true. Wait, right? why, would, why would a person who believes in a god care about empirics? Why would the faulty tools of man stand up to the word of God printed on the Bible? Yeah, this is where you get into fundamentalism, which is something that we're criticizing. Okay, let's, let's try this from I, a different perspective. I'm okay. now Christian. Uh, or no, I'm actually a pagan. Okay. Um, okay, and I hold a variety of beliefs. And cool. I want you to explain to me how they're how they're morally wrong, okay? Okay. Okay. So, I dedicate eighty percent of all my earnings to a teeth to the local church because I believe that if I don't do so, I'll be struck down by lightning in my. You mean sleep. a tithe? Tithe. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. So, like, getting eighty percent of your earnings is something that is well beyond means, and like, that's not unless you're making a shitload of money. That's, you're not going to be able to live very well off of that. And that's what we're going to be talking about Theophrastus. Right. That's, that's, you are bringing harm to your own life in your religious practice. And, and that's something that is not going to be helpful or productive to you. It does. And it's the gods. So I'll die. Right. And this, at the, there's a point of like, if somebody is just dead convinced that they're going to be engaging in self-harm, there's only so much logical reasoning that you can give to somebody to that, if they're religious or it's not. Like God. if somebody is just like, I like, if somebody's talking about self-harm from a from any number of perspectives, honestly, and they're dead convinced that they're going to be doing it, it's difficult to convince them out of how it. How can you how can you convince a person that self-harm is wrong if that self? But I gave you a logical right. argument about it, and you just said so, right? If you if whatever logical that, that ethical is, yeah. argument that I give to anybody, if their response is so, and their ethics just disagree with you, this is something that is well outside the bounds of a religious conversation. Wait, no, it's not. It's God. Yeah, it, the point of gods is that they're above us. You know, you for personally, I think it's and this is I'm being serious. It's, incredibly okay. funny when pagans come on my stream and they talk about gods, though, they're buddy, buddy. They're above you. That's the point. If you die for them, that's fine. They are literally the mesh that holds the world together for you guys. The idea like the idea. That yeah, no, there's a they, kind of like abstemious with, ethical argument. We're with like polytheism. Oh, we would never do a Hold human on. sacrifice. I, I'm going to agree with you, but also disagree with you here. Because with pay, with uh, the majority of polytheist traditions that I'm familiar with, yes, the gods are above us. This is this buddy buddy thing. I would agree with you. Winds up being like a different kind of toxic, and I think that that winds up being like an overcorrection of former Christians. But at How the same time, toxic? say what? How is that toxic? If you believe the, it, you believe the, it. Not... The buddy buddy thing. No, the, no, the, oh, uh, oh no. sorry, no, the, the hierarchical them being above us, self-harm for them thing. Like, how is that harmful at all? It's just as... Because it, uh, wait, you just talked about self-harm and then asked how it was harmful. It's, self, it's harmful because it's self-harm. No, that applies to my logic because I don't think there's anything above me. You believe in gods. If self-harm is right. being done for a god, what's wrong with that? Because it's harmful. It's God. You can have ethical constraints on practice. This is not unreasonable, and this is something we see in history from polytheists, which is what I've been bringing up over and over again. I've seen lacks of those ethical constraints demonstrated by polytheists as well. Absolutely. And just as you're, as you're going to find ethical lapses within any ideological system. I agree with that. Right. So we but should criticize the ethical lapses, argument. not necessarily just the ideological system in the first place. What if, a person if I said that leftists, if I gave you every example of toxic leftists not being convinced of empirical arguments, right, and then therefore said leftism bad because of these multiple examples of leftists being shitty, again, it's I, not I, again, system and, can't be bad. Every system can be bad. My problem right. is... We're agreeing group. now on that, right? I can make a logical argument against a bad outcome in a leftist system. If a person believes that the universe is God and God determines... No, but no. 
but you can do the same thing with religion in the same sense that you go, hey, you're human sacrificing and you're not getting any better crop growth than we are. So stop doing that. that I think he's explained that multiple times that you can do that. In the same sense that I can explain like, hey, you don't need to kill off a bunch of your farmers by working them to death to get good crop growth. Just like make better technology, right? <laughs> what's right or wrong there's literally no logical argument against that it is logically bulletproof that's it an authoritarian position and that's what it's, like so no, okay when you get into criticism of religion and i think that you should be able to criticize religion often what's going to be happening is that you're going to be finding fundamentalism extremism or authoritarianism and if you want to criticize religion and be against the toxic aspects of it you can criticize them on toxic. those basis and in, and i add to that supremacy uh, supremacy narratives which i think show up in and these things will show up in multiple uh, ideologies and that's what makes them into toxic narratives what's toxic about the supremacy narrative if you believe that the god is above you they're literally above you so the supremacy narrative no but okay uh i don't know how i don't i don't understand i the issue to any person doing a toxic activity they're going to think they're justified in doing that that's the point with, with religious people, that that thing that they're holding above themselves is is arguably not real, or to other th from the from theist to theist, not the message from the God that you should be getting. On the flip side, for toxic leftism, let's say, you have um you have a person who thinks that their worldview is so superior that they ascend themselves to godhood. That's what Stalin did. He made Russia think of him as a deity, essentially, because of his worldview, which was empirically calculated as the best one, right? Oh, it came from Marx and, and Leninism. Okay, it's Marxist Leninism. It's my spin on Marxist Leninism. I've got those two behind me. You know, you got me to run your country, and this is the most empirical possible way to do this. There was no God argument involved with... Um, with with Stalinism, it was it was all real world, physical people, coming to this conclusion. They were coming to a logical, empirical conclusion about how to run a country. You can only say that it was Im non empirical at this point because you're looking at it retrospectively. You have you have twenty twenty vision. Um. Uh, yeah, I don't <laughs> like at the time, at the time to be able to 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 debunk. Um, uh, Stalin's ideas, you would have to look at the, what he, what he mentioned, the, um, the, uh, what do you say? Um, authoritarianism, the, the self-righteousness or whatever, like the self, um, like you think your religion is the supremacy aspect. Um, and yeah, whatever he mentioned, like what, whatever he mentioned, just reapply that. I don't know why I forgot it instantly. We well, just apply that to to lex to to lex leftist behaviors. It would be the correct one. It'd be logically correct, right? Uh, this uh, this would be. Do you think that the universe is bigger than you, or something like that? I don't necessarily think that that winds up being a supremacy narrative in the in that way. Supremacy really narrative. What I'm talking about is when you have populations of people viewing themselves as better than others. And I'd what say that you can find this in religion as a prime example with Christianity, where they believe that the fact that they believe in their God ultimately makes them better than others because they think that everybody else is going to be going and burning for all of eternity. What's That's the supremacy narrative, right? That? What's logically incorrect about that? What's logically incorrect about that? That's the problem. If, they, if they're God's chosen people and they believe that all the heretics are going to burn. All right, if you want to talk, talk about like an internal critique or an external critique or what? How like, because you, you can you can that? have internal problems with it and that they claim that their God is merciful and then also is like sending a bunch of people to burn that he created. And then you get into questions of like whether or not he knows the future and uh, who actually bears responsibility if he's the creator especially if you're like a Calvinist or something like that, and you hold a deterministic view that God creates all of his creations, is uh, omnibenevolent, and then also creates his creations in order to that, that generate sin, that winds up being self-contradictory and illogical because you have the, God is the ultimate responsible 
uh, element there and is therefore responsible for all of the actions that people below him contribute to. So, but like, see how he's getting into the toxic aspect of it? If you think that God is, has supremacy over you and everything God does, quote unquote, God does is, is, is like the will of the universe and then you define god as like you know whatever events or, or whatever happens happens that's like where toxic things get into or or you can get into true delusion where you think that you're like the arbiter of like what god's will is and your will is god's will like because he's logic. the one that's who created like all of authoritarian it, right it doesn't matter god is above logic you're, then god is illogical now you're just saying now you wanted to say that no, whether or not logic, god is logical there you just cool. said god is illogical at that point well from our perspective, yeah, God works in mysterious ways. It's like Christianity 101, right? It doesn't matter whether or not God is logical. You can't mount a logical All right, argument. Well, you asked what was logically wrong with it, and then you said that God like, is it beyond logic or whatever. Exactly. So, all right, so now he's outside of logic, and that would be the criticism of the, of the religion at that point, that it's not a logical position. Well, uh, yeah, oh, sure, great. Then he's outside of logic. So what's the right. issue? They so say That's, is the, that's the problem with it then is that it's illogical. What's the issue with that? What do you mean? What's the issue with that? Are you saying I'm, that you can't I'm criticize a religion and saying it's illogical? Dude, I I don't understand. It's like, <laughs> like, I you could just do this with anything, Vosh. I don't know how you don't understand that this is applicable to any worldview ever. Um, your form of leftism is illogical. No, my form of leftism is above logic. Like, well, how do you know that? Well, because I just it, I just know it. <laughs> I don't know. Well, that doesn't sound very logical, so, <laughs> like, that's the problem. <laughs> well, hold on. Christianity, the Christians have been criticized for the holes in their story for quite a long time. And I agree. And the institution persists. What is the issue? And I don't, I don't have a problem with criticizing religion. I think that criticizing religion is a good thing, and I think that calling their deity illogical when it manifests in logical inconsistencies is good, and it's we should continue universe. doing that. Well, it doesn't matter if the Christian God is illogical. The Christian God is the Christian God. Logic is a human tool. Your mind literally cannot comprehend. Yeah, but we both agree that, like, humans created God. That's the thing. Like, it's a representation of, like, who we are as a... As a... <laughs> that's, that's where we get into the toxic part, is when you think that God is... God is, like... You could think about, like you said, with authoritarianism, where you think that you are impose, you are the arbiter of God's will. Okay, that's the author authoritarian um, version of of toxic religiosity is that you think that you have the right to impose your worldview on everyone else because you are following God's will. That's the authoritarian toxicness. The supremacy one is that maybe you're not the arbiter of your of your religion, but your religion or whatever you follow is superior to all other forms of anything. And uh, therefore, anyone that doesn't follow your religion is less than you and, and then therefore can be killed or whatever, or we should go to war against them. That's the supremacy. Uh, and then I forget the rest, but yeah. <laughs> the logistics. I don't think that, I think a lot of Christians have trouble biting a bullet and saying that their God is illogical. Is every time, God? every time I've gotten a Christian to go into that it's route, they start trying to backtrack me. real fast. Yeah, like that's, that's the thing is no Christian will say that, yeah, my God's just illogical, bro. He's just, he's beyond logic. <laughs> so it's the, the question, you're if you're a consequentialist, you're going to be wondering whether or not these arguments are effective. That one is effective. If I'm a consequentialist, I'm going to be beating these people to death with a hammer because there is literally no fucking way to make a logical argument to a person whose ethics are rooted in religion. It's not possible. I've tried. You can't do it. You just I think you just try. Vaj, you're not trying hard enough, my guy. We, we've we seen you try. Oh, what the fuck? I'd with toxic people. <laughs> Like, no, this, this is it, I, it, it's not about toxicity. I can try to convince people argument. who are wrong based on secular grounds. That's my whole channel. I can't convince people who are wrong on something ethically because they religiously believe in some extra thing is some dark matter. I've been able to do it. Why haven't you? Positions. I So I think this might just be a problem with the way that you're handling the argument at that point, because I've been able to do this. And I'm so then we'd want to be able to figure out all right what arguments are you using there and why aren't they being effective it it's not if you're just like haranguing against religious belief it's not actually going to be effective as far as changing somebody's it mind with respect to their deity whether or not you're effective the problem is there isn't a right answer there's no reliable way to, of doing it hold on if, if you're a consequentialist and you're saying it doesn't matter whether or not it's effective what the fuck are you going how do you disprove 
a metaphysically rooted material belief. Well, we just went through saying it's illogical, right? It do that doesn't matter. It's metaphysics. It's a whole level. Metaphysics of has to is constrained by logic. Ask no, any ask opinion. anybody that's engaging in metaphysics. It's like it's like Vosh thinks that every religious person will inevitably fall down the train of like. Well, nothing matters. I'm just following God's will, and everything I like is God's will, and nothing about it is logical. And it's like not everyone's that fucking crazy, Vosh. Again, this is where the toxic the people you've talked to are the toxic version of religion. And those are predominantly online people. Um, you can get into a lot of, like, I know a person who's, who follows like a toxic version of religion, or is illogical in their belief of religion. And the it's really easy to to now you might not be able to personally convince them, but you can get them to not like push their will onto other people. And the way you could do this is by just like simply stumping them. So someone might come up to you and go like, hey. Based on my religious beliefs, I believe that 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 abortion is wrong. And you go, okay, well, why is abortion wrong? And they go, well, it's just wrong. My religion says it's wrong. Okay, but does it is it any deeper than that? And if they continue going with like, nope, my religion just says it's wrong, so therefore it's wrong, <laughs> right? I, I think that's essentially what Vosh is saying. Is that everyone who's religious will go down this path? The problem with that is that a, you can very easily stop those people from influencing anyone else by just going hey this guy's arguments are illogical they have no bounding on anything else in the world my belief system is bound on something else aside from it's just wrong because it's wrong i can look at abortion and go hey um the it seems like it seems like suffering essentially or like being able to feel pain and stuff yeah like starts at about 24 weeks or 25 weeks whatever so anything after that is probably unethical because the, at the, that point, the fetus is capable of feeling more pain. Before that, and like having an experience, before that stage, the fetus is incapable, doesn't have the brain function necessary, we could do this through testing, to like have an experience in the world and has no prior experience in the world. So therefore, it's okay to terminate that fetus because it's not a human yet. There's a transitionary period between being a human and being a fetus, and that line... For me, is once that once that fetus has starts having um, starts having an experience, and uh, and then a religious person like that same religious person might counter with like, well, uh, I believe that that experience starts at conception. It's like, okay, we can test that. Do you truly believe that? When does con when is conception? Well, conception is when the when it was when the egg and the and the sperm like mate. And, and like form together that's conception okay so then you must be against um like plan b the pill right or yeah plan b and the pill because some of those things plan b specifically and some forms of like other contraception work by stopping the fertilized egg from attaching to the womb and that's how it works as contraception so are you against those things and then the, now they might say no i'm not against those things it's okay to take plan b and to take uh contraception but uh but uh but life still starts at conception and then you could attack that on the, on right there, boom, that's illogical. That doesn't make any sense. So you attack that, go, are you sure about that? So you think that life begins at conception, but you're okay with terminating something after conception because that's how plan B and, and the pill works or some forms of the pill work. And then you might get them to admit that like, okay, yeah, sure. I'm against plan B and the pill. You should, no, no woman should be with, maybe, maybe you go through the argument and you end up convincing them to go deeper and you go, okay, so now you're in a deeper pit and now we can apply that to a bunch of other things and we can see you know see how deep it goes so if, if life truly begins, begins at conception how can you tell or a how can you tell if something's been conceived and like is there any kind of testing for that and as well do you find that there's a problem with the amount of with the amount of uh, miscarriages that go go around we should start shouldn't we start rounding up women and like every time that they have sex ever they should like they should be tested to see if there's a conceived child in there because you're killing a human at that point right any miscarriage ever is a is a child that's being just just killed that could be prevented we can prevent that stuff if we if we test and monitor women who have had sex we can prevent those deaths um right if you if we have like if we have like regulated sex where like every time you have sex you a woman then goes into a goes into a, a a ward or whatever they go to the hospital and they're and they're there and they're testing to see if that there's a fertilized egg in there 
And then once they find the fertilized egg, now what do you do? Because I don't know that we have the technology to take out that fertilized egg and, 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 and bring it to birth. But the body in some way has rejected that egg for whatever reason. And it's about to be, it's about to be miscarried because of a million factors. What do you do with that thing? We have the technology to detect that it's there, but now what do you do with this, with this, with this, with this fertilized egg? Do we just freeze it and leave it? Are we leave it alone? Are you really here to say that every woman needs to be monitored after they have um, any kind of sex? Because, because there's a chance that they might accidentally miscarry a human life? Is that really the world you want? Then you can attack them on that. You can go deeper. And then if they say yes to that, that we should monitor, <laughs> we should monitor women. It's like, okay, now you're in like some crazy worldview that we can continue to go down the path of like attacking that, attacking that, but it's just gonna get deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, like maybe someone does, maybe a religious person does want that kind of worldview. And once you get deep enough and deep enough, you just kind of have to hope that everyone around them disagrees with that worldview, that that worldview doesn't continue essentially, right? Because you can get into some crazy, pretty crazy stuff and it be logically consistent. Right? If I'm a person, I could logically follow that, yeah, I'm against abortion because it's killing a human life. Human life starts at conception. So you can't have you can't have sex unless of course it's for uh, uh, for uh, not repopulation, holy shit. Reproduction. <laughs> you can only have sex if it's for reproduction. And the moment you have any kind of sex, we have to monitor you to make sure that you don't accidentally um, Make sure that you don't accidentally miscarry the child. We're going to make sure that you're monitored so that there's no... Because we have the technology to do that. So we should be doing that. Because... And that logically follows that we should be doing that. And now you have to argue. It's like, okay, should we really be holding women essentially against their will to make sure that a human life doesn't die? Is that really like something we should be doing? And then if they agree to that, like, okay, you know what? Sure. Um, uh, sure. I don't want to get too much into this. But just as a quick like addendum, right? Sure. Having a, a miscarriage isn't uh isn't killing a human being we're not going to consider that killing a human being it's like well, well then what is it well it's an accidental death of a human being well but we have the we have the opportunity to stop that accidental death of a human being and there's a bunch of and then oh god i don't want to keep going on this because there's a million worms i just opened up where it's like okay well a lot of accidental deaths of human being happen all the time that we could just that we could just not care about. So it's like, should nobody wear seatbelts? Should we just take away seatbelt laws because any car accident that happens without seatbelts is technically just an accidental death? If someone goes 130 kilometers an hour down the road and, and, and wraps their car around a, a, a telephone pole, is that an accident? Like, what is an accident at that point? Right? Metaphysics, it's, it's gonna no, be constrained not by if logic. The metaphysical, not if the metaphysical position is they work in mysterious ways. That is a valid metaph metaphysical position. It is one tier I think above that that's, logic. Okay. So we're, we're probably going to agree that God works in mysterious ways is a boring cop-out as far as the conversation goes. And that's when somebody is saying that they've lost here. the conversation at that People point. People die over this. Yeah, that's a problem, right? It's not a problem for them. No, Vosh, the answer you're supposed to say is it's not a pro your argument would be that it's not a problem for people who aren't for who, for atheists. People who are anti-theists don't have this problem and then you have to fight on that. Not it's not a problem for them. <laughs> <sighs> All right, let's that's be center. Like that's the problem is that it's not a problem for them. That's the toxic part of it. Thank you. We agree. I <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> That's so weird. I don't know. You, How do you miss the, his own argument? I think that we're, we're entering a non-productive space, and I want to see if we can find a productive space on this. The groundwork here is not workable. If, they, if there is a material belief that is rooted in a metaphysical presupposition that can't be logically argued against, then there's no way to move them off that belief outside of hitting them on the head and hoping Logic their is brain a really good. Logic is a really good tool against uh, somebody who's holding a logically ridiculous position if you can get them to understand the fallaciousness in it. Can you explain you have to get them why to... you believe in the gods? Just, just really quick. Can you I went through that, that argument a minute ago with respect to experience. So... What? You Wait, you realize that your brain is like a faulty meat computer that can interpret... Yeah, I'm not saying that it's something with absolute brain. confidence. I'm, I may... Uh, so... Th I think they... Logic doesn't have to be sound. That's like there's there's a reason why we use like things like words like logically sound. 
You can still be logical and be wrong. I, what? What is this weird argument? I bet you Wash is about to say that, like, yeah, but that's illogical for you to believe in a god when there isn't one there. Well, no, based on my experience, like, <laughs> this is so dumb. Getting into a discussion about whether or not the gods exist is going to be something that is going to require a whole nother conversation, I think, they, they, especially with the amount of resistance that you're putting up to it. They don't, they Let's don't. just be it fair. It doesn't require combo. They don't. There's no evidence for it. We can sure there is. You have uh, experiential evidence is something that you can what engage with, and, with the, theologically. Say what? What experiential evidence no, is there so... for the existence of the gods? We have multiplicity of spiritual experiences in humans across the that's world. Not, this isn't, that's, that's not an answer. Humans have had multiplicities of lots of things. That, that's not, our brains are faulty. We interpret yeah, our, you can, our dying moments as spiritual what, experience. What you're giving is a logical argument that one can be an atheist. And I agree with you. One can be an atheist logically, no, and that's, that's fine. That's the only logical argument that you can have, or at least no. an agnostic. Yes. And this yes. is where, all right. So then what I'm going to do is instead of like getting into an argument with you on this is defer to the uh, existing philosophical debates on PhD level in the highest echelons of this care. conversation okay. where they're going back and forth with each other. And that the atheist philosophers are not saying what you're saying to their opponents. That's fine. They're all cuckolds. Oh my People god! People have been talking about dragons for hundreds of years. Does that mean dragons are real? People okay. have shared. We have a cultural imagination. Historically, we're pretty people. confident that dragons do not exist. But as far Just as philosophy ahead, is concerned, we're, it's the confidence Our level is significantly changing. lower with respect to gods. I think about as many people right now believe in confidence, uh, believe in uh, dragons as they do Odin and stuff. Um, those numbers are probably not too far off. I would doubt that. Being, I would highly doubt that. I, how can you make? How can you possibly argue the validity of one particular religious system when the world moved on from it and the evidence is? Oh yeah, well I know our brains can weakly interpret like liminal experiences as supernatural, depending on their cultural influences. Right, if, if you want to talk about potentiality, right? and you want to hold that potentiality is a valid cause for holding a position, then you're going to get into potentiality regarding the gods. And then now it's valid to hold that position because our brains are uh, potentially, we're potentially engaging in hallucinations with respect to spiritual experiences. We're also potentially dealing with reality when we have spiritual experiences. Both are true, right? It's so, um, yeah, I don't know. God, I have to take a piss. <laughs> Hold on. Let me just go quickly through this. I'm going to take a bit. I might leave the video playing. Um, like... <sighs> so, the issue is, like, with the mind. We don't... We don't know what the fuck is going on up there. Um... So, yeah, you can... You can have... When you have an experience, it can either be a halush... Uh, hal what the fuck? Can I? Am I okay? A hallucination? Hallucin hallucin Hold on, I can't even say the word right now. This is actually as far as with reality when we have spiritual experiences. Illusion. I don't know why. Both are true. Sorry, I just needed to hear other words for a second. Hallucination. What the fuck was that? Illusion. It could be an illusion. Oh, hallucination. I was mixing the two words together. Jesus fucking Christ. Uh, it could be a hallucination or it could be a reality, and there's no provable way that we could figure that out right now. Um. There just doesn't seem to be a lot of evidence to go for it. But that's not that doesn't mean it's illogical. <laughs> so somebody could have a spiritual awakening or whatever, you know? And and maybe it's drug induced, right? And maybe they are having hallucin <laughs> hallucinations. Um they're having illusions, they're having hallucinations due to due to a dr drug induced like area, but they might call that that experience that they have in there a religious and and a uh, spiritual experience that they went through and what they learned from that experience is is their religion and that's not illogical that is perfectly logical True, right it's as far as the potentiality is concerned this is why there's uh, agnosticism when it comes to what the settled matter on this is it's not that when you get into the philosophical tradition of debate around this issue on the highest levels, it's not a settled science. There is no, it's not a settled science because there's never been a start to the science. It's not a settled anything. Settled you philosophy then. As science is the wrong term, you're correct. But uh, philosophy would be a subset, or uh, science would be a subset of philosophy. 
And, I agree with that. Right. But it's so, definitely not a science. There's no empirical evidence for any of it. I agreed. I've already given you that. It's not like theology is not a science in the same way, uh, well, that a lot any philosophical system that doesn't fall under science is not a science, right? Uh, I hesitate to say which way history goes, but it's where you get into questions of soft sciences, whether or not they're sciences or whatever the fuck. Um, I think generally speaking, it's best when we adjust our beliefs in accordance with the evidence, because mm -hmm. if we make wild leaps and start basing ethical arguments and material understandings on um, highly speculative, like very circumstantial or possibly non-existent evidence, you like run into massive problems when it comes to like social cohesion, ethical uh, reasoning, stuff like that. I think it's important. Here we have a lot of agreement. Yeah. We scale it back. Now, yeah. this isn't an argument against philosophy or like analytical engagement i mean everyone can have different opinions in the world around them that's fine but i think there's a big difference between like varying philosophical perspectives and saying that like we live in a world with spirits or with gods or there is an afterlife because now you're talking about things that affect what people might make logical arguments off of and if a person I, believes in the afterlife how can i tell them that murdering people is wrong if they think it'll send them to a better place i would love it if everybody tempered their beliefs with respect to available evidence on the matter um and that would be something that like i believe that i'm doing that with respect to my religious exploration i hold that i don't know that the gods exist but i'm operating exploring with respect to my experiences uh and my belief in the gods is provisional on the basis of that respect Right. And I think that if more people did that, we'd have a healthier engagement with respect to religion. And I think that if you want to talk again, they... toxic spirituality is when you don't do that. You can't tell a person, hey, only have faith when the evidence demands it. That's not how faith works. I think that you can temper your position with respect to available evidence. That's reasonable. That's not what faith is. Again, I, this, I'm pagan, not Christian. We're looking at faith completely differently, I think. Um, so Christians have, I think, a really when toxic narrative around faith. faith. When you say you have faith in something, mm -hmm. you're, I mean, you're saying that in, in spite of a lack of evidence, you still believe no. that thing exists. No, I think it's a bad definition of faith. With uh, faith, generally, with Christians are using the word faith. They're just using it under the context of trust, that they trust in the Bible or something like that. They have faith in the Bible, so they're trusting it. And uh, I think that that's a bad narrative when your trust in something is overruling counter evidence. Counter evidence is the, is the issue. That I think an absence of defeaters and an absence of harm is not necessarily a problem, but in presence of defeaters and in presence of harm, that's where you get serious issues. That's just a God of the gaps argument, though. At that point, you just get to fill in the blank. And that also lets you speculate I, on the this is, Absence of defeaters is philosophy. Like if, you're, if you can hold a position, absence of defeaters, and also discussing whether or not it's likely, right? Like, no, that's, they, that's a whole... Because there's no defeaters. That's the invisible unicorn argument. Like, there might be an invisible unicorn right behind me that's only invisible when people look at it, but at all other times is fully visible. And, and if somebody is, all right, let's go with the invisible unicorn. If somebody is engaging in a religious practice with invisible unicorn because they have experiences with respect to the invisible unicorn and they're giving offerings to the invisible unicorn that are not something that is going to be substantially affecting their life, they're engaging in that religion in a way that is uh, not harming anybody else. I don't necessarily have a problem with that because in absence of defeaters, in absence of harm, you're engaging in a practice that, all right, fine, whatever. I, it's it's, it's not your, your life. I don't harm. give a shit. No, it's not absence of harm, though. They, they live with the constant belief that there's a fucking mystical creature hovering right behind them. This is mental illness. They, 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 uh, they if getting into religion as mental illness territory is also not the take. DSM-5 even is, goes against that. Um, well, they're so, all no, oh my God. no, no, right. no. The, the belief that there's a, th that's literally a definition of schizophrenia. The, di the only difference between schizophrenic diagnoses and some religious beliefs is the legitimacy of the institutions they're pulling from. Let's be real. Like the idea of like, yeah, there's an invisible like spirit hanging around me at all times, like hovering right behind me. Like, yeah, come on. That would be diagnosable. That would. Even if no. it's like a, yeah, no. it would. If it, de it depends on like how it's being approached, right? And I think that I'm not somebody who's uh, familiar with as familiar with diagnoses 
process when it comes to schizophrenia. So that's an aspect of the debate that I would just I say that I don't know a whole lot on. And I think that, but I think that what, what happens with a religious comparison, comparison between religion and mental illness is that it takes the stigma against mental illness and applies it unnecessarily onto religion in a way that is engaging in another supremacy narrative. And that's a, that's an issue that I have with that kind of approach. There is a video, although by an atheist, if you want to check it out, by Shannon Q talking about this narrative, compared, comparing religion to mental illness, that I'd advise anybody in your audience to check out. Shannon Q, religion, think, please stop calling religion and mental illness is the name of the video. Do you think schizophrenia is bad? I think like, schizophrenia should be treated, if you want, much just my, you know what I mean? I'm not against, like, uh, if somebody has a mental illness, they should seek treatment. possibly differentiate between a person who religiously believes there's the invisible unicorn blah blah and a person who believes it through psychosis again this is a dsm-5 question i would consult people that are experts on that issue I as far as like how you do it you know what i mean like I, we can talk about ethically because i know plenty of people who are schizophrenic and religious right that they're dealing with some kind of psychosis and they're also religious and there are ways of separating the two as far as like how they approach things and they're on treatment for one, and it helps with the schizophrenia, and yet they remain religious. This is something that I've seen a few times within my community. I think that if you are getting, uh, if if you have mental illness and are religious, you should seek treatment for the mental illness. Absolutely. Wouldn't that potentially just mean that some religious beliefs are just identical to schizophrenia, but resistant to treatment? I think that mental illness can take on religious themes, but that doesn't mean that religion is a mental illness. Well. I certainly think some things that people believe for religious reasons tend to have them overlapping with diagnosable symptoms of mental conditions. Yeah, just because right? the overlap doesn't mean they're the same thing. No, I don't that's, think... That's getting into correlation causation territory. I don't think they're the same thing. I just think it's notable. Like, I mean, there yeah, are... you can note problems. it all you want to, but I'd say this is a conversation you need to have with an expert, not me. Fair. I mean, there have been suicide cults throughout history, but I don't know if you can make an ethical argument against ritualistic suicide if you thought that it was again like harmful practices, man. Is getting right it's back. That's harmful. that's theophrastus. If you're harming yourself part. with your religious practice, that's the problem. Well, if they think they'll be tortured forever if they don't do it. That's the whole point of hell, right? If they don't do the ritualistic, then you suicide. have. There's we can ha we can have a conversation about toxic religions too, right? If you want to, if you want to have like. Um, a religion that necessitates harmful practices. That's a toxic religion. And again, this gets into that analogy that we were talking about earlier with respect to toxic masculinity and toxic spirituality. You, There are toxic spiritualities, absolutely. There's also toxic masculinity. There's also toxic expressions of a lot of things, but there's also expressions of those things which are not toxic, including masculinity and spirituality. The difference is, as long as a secular person shares my axioms, I can explain to them how some elements of masculinity are harmful. But if a person has a religious belief in the, the validity of things they do that are toxic, I can't make that argument against them. Is the crux of this just that arguing against them is hard? The mortal coil. Like, huh? I, because again, I've had these conversations with people that like hold a position pretty strongly and still move them away from engaging in harmful practices on the basis of these arguments that I'm giving you. Okay, what? I, I, so day, it's, I've it's, been it's, able to do this you, you and, can, and you're just saying it's hard. So you don't want to like, it's just, this is, well, this is really strange. It's, it's always possible because people are um, ir irrational. So even if a person has a logically consistent metaphysical belief in God telling them to kill the whores, you can still pull them out of that. If you, I don't know, hit them in the head hard enough or give them ice cream or something. People are weird. It's about the underlying logic. And it's, it's, it's about who you can reform and who you have to kill, right? So imagine your grand poobah of society, okay? The vast majority of people who commit crimes, vast majority, have basically the same axiomatic beliefs as most people, want people to be good and happy, you know, crimes, they hurt someone, you know, even murderers sometimes, you know, it's like, um, life is complicated. They can be reformed, and I want that. But some people have axiomatic beliefs that are different. Some people believe on a moral level that it's, say, good to kill certain types of people. Like, on a fundamental basis. Not because they think it'll make society better. Not because they think it'll improve the life of themselves or others. Purely for its own right. It's a separate axiom. These people can't be reformed. They have to be jailed indefinitely, or they have to be executed. It's the only thing you can do. You can hope they'll change, sure. But, you know, well, that's what the indefinite prison sentence is for, right? You see if their cognition shifts. The issue is that religion is like a gigantic other axiom. And while there are people who have that process, 
whose morals will align with mine, if they end up having a disagreement with me on principal ethical positions rooted in metaphysics, I can't do shit outside of the aforementioned ice cream or hitting them on the head. That's like really dangerous socially. It's dangerous for a person to be able to say, I think we should be able to kill black people and to have internally a bulletproof, literally unarguable justification for it. You can't argue them out of that position because their position is completely internally consistent. They don't think that because it'll make the world better. They think it because their God told them that's what's right. You can't convince them out of that. You can hit them on the head or you can give them ice cream. Maybe. That's I think you're talking word. again. You're talking about people that are just devoid of ethical concerns. This is not a criticism of religion. This is no, a criticism of a people that don't have ethics. No, they do have ethics. They're informed by their God. Or that maybe they have ethics, but their ethics are malformed in some way. Malform right. Like okay, we're malform we're talking about malformation of of ethics. Religion Great. You can criticize those things right. on an ethical level without saying that, you know, religion bad. Like because again, this is this has been a slippery slope conversation where. Like they have religion, therefore they could X, 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 X. And that's, no, that seems to be the crux of your point. It doesn't matter even if they don't do that. It's, it's not a slippery slope. It starts at a plateau and stays there. It's being religious opens. If you it up starts at the plateau and stays argument. there, then you have to argue this is a commonality with everybody who's religious at that point, which I don't think I, that you can do. No, just because religion necessarily entails a, uh, 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 a breach in axiomatic vulnerability doesn't mean that that unethical behavior will be demonstrated in all of them. It's a numbers game. It's like, it's like, imagine this that is, it's you're basically arguing bad. now religious people can't be ethical because no, like, that's, I'm, I, no, I'm not. Okay. It's, all right. Then, no, then what are you doing? Cause that's what it sounded like to me. It's so a problem. go for it. It's like having a, it's like having a, a, like a hole in the house. It's like, it's like, imagine you took every house in America and you're like, okay, it's bad to have a hole in your roof, like a little hole, maybe the size of a finger, you know? Mm -hmm. There are going to be houses that are in great condition that have that hole in their roof. And there are going to be houses in shit condition that have non-leaky roofs, but it's always bad to have the hole in the roof. And sometimes that hole being in the roof means that after a rainstorm, the interior of the house can flood. And that's that. It's always bad to have the, the, the hole in the roof. But that's not me saying that like it's impossible for a house to be good if it has the hole in the roof or that it'll always lead to disaster or anything like that. It's right. just it, it's a vulnerability that can lead to problems with no potential upside. It's just it's it's just a bad vulnerability in our cognition. It's just a fault. It's 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 like um, a, another cognitive bias, right? Tons of people have basic cognitive biases like um like a uh, uh, like gambler's fallacy or like sunk cost fallacy. We adopt these, we internalize them. It's always bad to have them, but lots of people are fine and successful in spite of having them, right? Like you just, you want to get rid of those, but I can make rational arguments in favor of getting rid of those logical fallacies. The religious thing is self-justifying, which is the real issue. You can make like rational arguments within religion. I thought we already agreed on that as well. Right, I mean, like it's, and again, making ethical. So when we're talking about like the hole in the building, right? For me, that hole in the building, the. <laughs> I mean, I, I might be looking at it differently because the building for me will be like, all right, here's your spirituality is the building and the hole in it can be any number of things that allows you to slip in some sort of authoritarianism. And that's where that toxicity is going to be a, of a reasonable discussion. Though. But you're talking about the house with respect to being like one's worldview and the whole is going to be spirituality, which allows other things to sneak in, right? Yeah, so you're like, superstition yeah. to affect your reasoning. All right, well, we can call the whole superstition and then we're going to be more or less on the same page. But superstition, from my perspective, is going to be akin to toxic religiosity. No, okay, then not superstition. Uh, any religiosity of any, or right. any- It's a spiritual God no. belief, that kind of thing, right? That's any your, spiritual, so, anything. Yeah, Arrow and that's, cards, your position is going to be that. But I, that's where we're just going to be disagreeing because that's we're we're talking past each other at that point because you're holding that religion is bad axiomatically, basically. Yes. Right. As and that's not. I don't think that that's productive. You don't have an argument for that at that point. Well, it's just axiomatic. No, it's it's axiomatic in the sense that it's a it's it's a defiance of a basic axiomatic principle I hold relating to truth, which is yes, I believe we should root our beliefs. Right. In so then it's not an axiom. You're justifying it in some way, but the justification seems to be related always to toxic expressions of spirituality and not spirituality in and of itself. Not You're just blaming the, the spirituality. 
but you never want the hole in the roof, even if it doesn't always lead to the flood. Right, you're just calling religion the hole in the roof in the analogy, and I don't think I think that's disanalogous at that point. Because you're opening yourself up to supernatural justifications for ethical and empirical positions, which is the problem. So if you open yourself up to that, right, that is, is this is like not empiricism bad, basically, but. In order to get to empiricism, you have to hold non-empiricism positions in the first place. Yes, there's, a, there's a whole conversation in philosophy theory. about how being empiricist only winds up being a self-defeating position. And that's... I acknowledged right off the bat, right. axioms okay. are that's, unjustified. I'm appealing and... to that. I'm not trying to get you in a gotcha with that. I'm appealing to that. We agree on that already, right? So when you're saying that, like, the problem with this is that we start it, we can, that there's an acceptance of things that are not empirical... We've already agreed that that's a base issue that we all have to deal with in order to explore impossible. things in the first place. I think here's a, to summarize basically where I'm at on that perspective. I think that if you're going to be engaging with spirituality, there are certain assumptions that you're going to be making about your experiences in order to explore spirituality. People are going to be doing that and you can engage with that in a healthy way or an unhealthy way. And toxic religiosity is going to be when you're exploring that in an unhealthy way and uh, religiosity that lives within these ethical constraints, right? That we, where you're not engaging in your religion in a way that is unethical is going to be a more healthy manifestation of religiosity. It, and we should be fighting it, for that and not against everybody who's religious. It feels it feels like, okay, it, here's the problem. It feels like you have a bunch of people who are just going about their lives, living a nice secular life. And then you walk in and you're like, I've got a deck of cards right here. Look at this. I will do whatever the deck of cards tells me to do. And it's 52 cards. And 50 of them tell you to do like normal good things. And two of them tell you to like rape and murder. And you're like, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. And you're just like randomly know. flipping through oh. them and you just do whatever the cards say. And when people in inevitably you confront you on the consequences of your newfound life decision, you're like, look, overwhelmingly, these cards tell me to do good things. Right. You know? We should have a conversation about whether or not those cards should be in the deck at that point. And that's when you get into religious reform. I don't think you can make that argument with religious people because once a person believes in the existence of a god, once they once a person is open to supernatural arguments, they're open to them uh, holistically. If this you're is, religious, this is a regular argument. This is a regular conversation within heathenry where we're talking about like when you get into the focus crap and they're saying that uh, because thing X existed in history with uh, Vikings practicing it or whatever, right? And then they say, because that was the case, we should still be doing it now because we're trying to revive the tradition and act in accordance with it, right? That's a, that's an argument that these kind of people will make. However, uh, one of the things that I'm pushing back on that with personally, and I know a lot of other people who do the same thing, are saying, look, just because something exists in history is not justification enough to say that we should revive it absolutely. The pe people in the past did slavery. Christians in the past did slavery. Vikings in the past did slavery and all that other kind of shit. We can revive the traditions without bringing with it all of its toxic bullshit. So you can remove the toxic bullshit because it's toxic bullshit and continue engaging in the traditions. Make logical, what you're trying to do right now is make a logical argument. The problem is we're talking about religion. It's rooted right. in- And I have seen tradition. effect to it in my uh, activism on that issue. Yeah, people can be moved, but right. it's, it's a weakness that doesn't need to exist there. And they move because they're, they move, by the way, they're wrong to do it. If there's a Christian who believes that whites are ordained better than blacks by God, and you mm -hmm. convince them not the case, they're demonstrating weakness because metaphysically, they have as strong a justification for that position as you do for secular human racial equality. The only real ethical, logical solution to that conundrum should be both of you drawing pistols. But because people are weak and culturally influenced, people with ground, uh, grounded, logically consistent religious arguments for horrible things move over due to peer pressure, which is kind of part of what I want to do, except with all of it. Because I don't think we get any benefits from this particular mode of understanding the world. I don't believe in any of this uh, superstitious stuff, and I don't think you derive you, any truth from it. You don't believe, I'm not saying that you need to believe it. I'm saying that if you're going to be criticizing it in a way that is operable to making a movement work, you, no, pluralism is going to be the preferable approach of the criticism. But I'm in favor of including Christians and Jews and Muslims and blah, right. blah, blah, all the religious people. Which means you should reform to a pluralistic position rather than an anti-theist one anyway, because that's right. consistent with your goals uh, that you've expressed. 
no, again, I believe that people with toxic masculine tendencies should be part of the movement, but mm -hmm. I will still criticize toxic masculinity, but all religion is toxic. Right, so. I'm, and pluralism is not saying we need to cast out everybody that demonstrates some sort of non-pluralistic aspect, right? Otherwise, pluralism would just be incompatible with many forms of Christianity. But as long as those Christians who are engaging with a movement are engaging with it, with it in a way that is pluralistic, in that they're respecting others and not engaging in proselytory attitudes, then they're fine, right? Like, this, that's... If they're respecting those boundaries, there's no issue. Just like you're going to be fine with somebody who is expressing toxic masculine traits within your movement, so long as they're not creating victims within your movement. Well, I don't have an issue with people who are religious in my community. I've gotten emails about that, and I always tell them right. to welcome in it. And that's, that's good. And, an, ethical criticism, so. and I've gotten people that are religious in your community telling me uh, that while they appreciate a lot of a, a lot of that kind of that they're likewise appreciating that they're also frustrated with the anti-theist thing because it's not necessary it's wasted that's, energy that's and fine. that's why yeah, i'm making I'm sure the argument people, for here is a preferable narrative for I'm you to sure be able to engage with who are like i used to like Vosh, but like he was too like uh, you know i'm really anti-semitic and he was just too not anti I'm, I'm not talking about people like that what i'm talking about well, well, is people no, that are still are. in you're no talking there's talking about people that are in your community yeah. like you and have criticisms this is very different from what you're talking about where it's yeah, like that hate like you them. now because of whatever Vosh i'm not super intimately anti. familiar with your community but the people that i'm talking about are people that have positive opinions on you which is the reason why i'm having this conversation in the first place a there's a lot of crossover opinion. between us I'm not going to attack happening? myself and pretend that I don't have issues with the the consequences of religious thinking because there are people in my community who don't like it. I'm I not saying that you should. No, I, and that's not the argument. The argument uh, is that if you're going to be engaging with this, you should be engaging with it effectively and in a way that is consistent with your positions. And that's why I was saying that you should be against toxic expressions of religiosity and engage, in, and engage in it in a pluralistic narrative because it is largely the behaviors that you're already engaging with and consistent with your goals in coalition building. That would be cucking myself. Why? <laughs> because I'm not... It's Only largely what you're already doing. It's just that it takes away the toxic criticism aspect that hits people that are, you're on your side. It's not I, cucking no, yourself. That's, that's fine. No, that's the no. You're describing self cucking here. You're saying, hey, you have a broad criticism, but there are people on that you're there's, you're getting some friendly fire in your community here. Mm -hmm. So you should you know lower it so that you're only criticizing the worst elements of the things you dislike. Not simply because that. you're hitting your allies. If you're hitting your allies on something that is worth criticizing, then that's that's the toxic masculinity I, I conversation, right? Like that's fine. Uh, the the issue isn't that. The issue is that you're you have the opportunity to be able to criticize toxic spirituality, and not hit your allies and get the same results. Because all of the criticisms that you've been offering me in this conversation are with respect to toxic spirituality. Nope, they're with spirituality in general. And I think right. that uh, I, I, these are the arguments that oh, I want to make. I, I'm criticizing toxic religiosity, in addition to being a different argument and not one that I believe in, um, would be like super cucked. Like, oh, yeah, guys, I don't have an issue with all religion. It's just like I don't like it when Christians say other people are worse than them. Mega cucked. I can feel Why is that cucked? What's the issue? Because it's a, it's a lie. It's inauthentic. I don't. Okay, I, said, I get that it's not like in line with what your intuitions are currently. That's why no, I'm trying to make an position. argument against no, it. No, don't, don't denigrate it. It's not my intuitions. It's my position. It's my ethical framework. Um, and yeah. What is your ethical bad. framework? Okay, all right. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, in, in this case, that religion and supernatural thinking is bad. Um, if if I cheapen <laughs> that, if I'm if I'm like, okay, well, I'll only share half my position on this because people in my community don't like it. I feel like I'd be doing them a No, disservice. that's not the reason. It's, that's why I'm saying that, that's why I'm trying to provide a better argument of like what your position should be given your values. If you're a consequentialist and a utilitarian and you're wanting coalition building, then yeah. anti-theism is not consistent with those things. Okay. Unless you're just saying, well, it's my position, so I'm just going to fire blindly. At which point, fine. It's I guess it's not, what you can do, but firing. it's just, it winds up being a bad position that is not in line with your other goals. Advocacy <sighs> for coalition building doesn't mean that you can't criticize things in groups that you want to coalition build. And I'm not saying you should stop criticizing religion. I'm, in fact, giving you the ability to criticize religion through other arguments that aren't just religion well, bad. I don't believe in. I don't believe in your arguments. You don't believe, in, okay, you don't believe that harmful practices are bad. Right. We, we agree that a harmful practice, ending, like your so far practice included ending malaria. So no, I don't think we agree on that. Ah, uh, 
All right. Uh, <laughs> well, we have completely That's a, there's a bit of an impasse there on top of the religiosity here. But no, it's no argument against religion is sufficient unless it addresses its roots. You know, you might as well be painting over. Well, yeah, if you want it, if your argument is against religion broadly, then sure. It's just that within uh, any effective movement, you're going to be having religious people in it. So you should be examining. All right, we have religious people. What makes those religious people a problem? Is there something specific that they do? And it's not the God belief, I think. The thing that, that they're doing, that when it manifests in something that is harmful, is when you have these supremacy narratives, fundamentalism, extremism, authoritarianism, right? Okay. And when those are I manifest like within those uh, your, religiosity, that's saying, when you get toxic. What you're saying is that you should only be concerned with holes in your roof if you live in areas that have a monsoon season. Like, that's how I feel. I feel like I'm saying, hey, guys, you should have watertight roofs. And you're like, hold on. Uh, you're just it's saying that you can't have like a, a fundamentalism with respect to like a drizzle. I think that when you get with, with Christianity, I think that you can have Christians in your movement and still criticize Christianity for its authoritarian tendencies. And I think that you can even find probably criticisms of my own religion if you're going to be uh, <sighs> okay, operating on that standard. I, I feel like, I feel because like there are... in. There's only like 15 minutes left of this. I don't know are authoritarian expressions of heathenry and we should talk about those things and we should be finding ways to fight them but say i don't think this conversation this is really boring now so in summary of this to conclude it seems like vosh just doesn't understand like yeah he just doesn't understand that uh anything you do can be positive or toxic there's nothing inherently toxic about religion there are just toxic acts aspects of religion um That's all. I, I, that's yeah. That's it. I don't know. And he can, just can't explain. He can't explain why at all. It seems. I I don't even know. I have no idea what the fuck Vosh's position is. <laughs> I, I have no fucking idea. Um. Yeah. This chatter says it perfectly. Vosh just has no answer and keeps re reiterating to, or retreating to. But religion is bad because it is, which is the same toxic thing that you that this guy says like religion does. Like you, but you're doing it from a secular, a secular worldview. Like you're proving this guy's point in this, in this, in this thing. Yeah, I don't know. Um. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's it. That that chatter's got it. Watch just keep retreating to, but religion bad because it's bad, and then that's it. I don't know. So, that's the end of this. Um, I'm going to be right back. And, uh, Papa Bless.